You are watching game 86 on the 2023 Banana Ball World Tour, loved by our dear friends over at Zappos. The Savannah Bananas are 33, 32, and 2 against their arch rivals, the Party Animals, who have taken the last seven games and look to make it eight straight before our tour's finale in two days in Cooperstown, New York. Tonight, the two squads battle in the Salt City, Syracuse, New York, in NBT Bank Stadium with over 11,000 proud Central New Yorkers fired up and ready for Banana Ball. Let's take a look at the Savannah Bananas defensive alignment as they try and secure the tour for the eighth straight ball game. From left to right in the outfield, it is Michael Deeb, D.R. Meadows, and Noah Bridges. Third to first in the infield gives you Jackson Olsen, Ryan Cox, Danny Hosley, and Eric Jones Jr. Bill Leroy is handling the catching, and Jared Donaldson is his battery mate on the bump. And this is Tyler Gillum and Adam Byron just looking for a sound defense out there on the mound backing Jared Donaldson. You've got Jackson Olsen, who's on a little bit of a cold streak in the trick play department, but for Ryan Cox across both games in the doubleheader. How about eight trick plays for Coxie? And Danny Hosley had one at second base as well in one of the games of the doubleheader. The Bananas love putting him at second base, and that's where he'll be tonight. Let's zoom in on the 2022 Coastal Plain League champion with the Bananas, Jared Donaldson, on the bump. He is three for three in his trick play attempts on the tour, but he is not thinking about tricks right now. The splitter specialist, Peach Belt, Pitcher of the Year in 2022 in his fifth and final campaign at Georgia Southwestern. Has his game face on, and he is trying to get his second championship in as many years as a nanner. And despite having a great start the last time out, he was actually handed the loss. He went five and two thirds innings, allowed just four hits and one run but three sprints and three strikeouts. And the reason Donnie got the loss was because of a lack of run support. In fact, when you look at Jared Donaldson's last four starts, which comprised 22 innings pitched, he has only earned two points for the Bananas. And that's just because the bats are not swinging it. But he comes into this start a 93 ERA plus. And for Donnie, the keys to the game, he is going to need to limit his sprints. He had three in the last start. He would definitely like to keep that a little lower. And he needs to keep the party animals off balance. You've got to think he's got to take away what he's seen Brett Helton, Drew Gillespie, and Sean Fluke do. And let's face it, the party animals a little bit more of a patient team, but Donnie's got to mix up his delivery and a couple more pitches to try and keep these bats quiet and just continue to work out of jams that he's done very well this season. Here is Jesse Cole to get the people ready to rumble here in Cuse. Banana, Banana Nation, it's time. So on three, I need everyone here to yell, start the clock. One, two, three. Showtime. From the crossroads of the Empire State, we give you the 86th of 87 banana ball games here in 2023. Reese Hampton, Dalton Cornett, and Tanner Thomas due to swing it here in the top of the first. Reese Lightning. Former minor leaguer with the Detroit Tigers and Arizona Diamondbacks across four years of affiliated ball. Now in his second campaign as a banana baller. A nanner last year, he has gone to the dark side here in 2023 and fouls that one off harmlessly as it lands in the third deck here in NBT Bank Stadium. He's pacing the tour with his 380 batting average, 447 on base percentage, and 624 slugging percentage. And let us not forget, for Reese Hampton, he sits just two hits away from becoming the first man in Banana Ball World Tour history to reach triple digits in the hits department. Tries to check his swing, goes around on the splitter around the bottom of the zone. Donaldson supplements his best pitch with four seam and two seam fastballs, as well as a slider and changeup. This one rolled to the right side. Jackson Olsen bounces it to first, and the greatest showman of Banana Land has his 21st trick play in 24 attempts on the season. And honestly, you're a little surprised this early in the ball game to see Jackson Olsen try for that trick play with Reese Hampton barreling down the line, one of the most dangerous guys for the party animals. And you don't want them scoring the first point and runs of this contest. So pretty gutsy trick play by Jackson Olsen, but a successful one at that. The Bananas have not led in the all-important points category throughout this seven-game winning streak for the party animals. It has been utter dominance 
from start to finish. It's Dalton Cornett in his second world tour, both of them with the party animals, with a 1-1 count on him. The pride of Pippa Passes, Kentucky has been superb. Fouls that one out of the stadium, no chance for the fans to make a play. The DH hitting 329, a 389 on base percentage, a 492 slugging percentage, so he is flirting with the vaunted 345 slash line. As the fans have their first chance to make a play, and it ends up clanging off of a man's hands down in the first deck. Boy, and that is just what is so cool about seeing such a big crowd here in Syracuse is every fan getting up out of their seats and the sheer excitement and then disappointment when these fans are trying to catch the foul balls. 2-2 two -two count now on Dalton Cornett. DC3, a very hard man to strike out. Pacing the tour with his 24 sprints compared to just 15 Ks as far as a ratio goes. And he also does a whole lot of that. Finds a gap in the four hole and is aboard with one away. And that's just a good piece of hitting by Dalton Cornett with Reese Hampton not able to reach. You love the guy in your two hole who is just as capable as of getting on base for you. And for Dalton, he's just continued to hit well in road games, batting 330. And by the way, he's actually leading the party and was with eight home runs in road games. He will run, although sparingly, 7 for 14 in his stolen base attempts. Truly 7 for 12 when it comes to trying to swipe anything but first to second. He has had a couple mix-ups with, mix with Vincent Chapman, our home plate umpire, in which Cornette thought he had ball four, ended up being out on an attempt to steal first without that truly being his intention. Now Tanner Thomas sends this one to left center. DR Meadows and Michael Deeb, they nearly collide. Wait a minute, Deeb, the left fielder, ends up calling off the captain of the outfield, and they have a little discussion about how they will handle such plays later on in the night. And it's kind of a spacious outfield here in NBT Bank Park, and you saw both Meadows and Deep get pretty good jumps on that ball off the bat of Tanner Thomas, and kind of surprised it was Michael Deeb who wound up coming up with the catch, but good that they're communicating after the out is made and won't have kind of a mix-up like that going forward in this ball game, hopefully. A one count on Jake Skull. Texas Rangers first round draft pick back in 2010, seven year minor league career. That was followed up by four years of SEC football at UGA. Now he's in his third world tour, first with the party animals. And has gotten two heaters behind 0 and 2. And this is where you see Jared Donaldson, a splitter specialist looking to go to his signature pitch to retire Jake's goal. And he will do just that, getting out of this frame in four minutes and 10 seconds for the bananas. Sides for the single, pretty much a dream start for the Nanners. Without a party animal touching home plate, you can't ask for anything more. As the protagonists of Banana Land just need one run to win the inning. Let's get a glimpse at the world's slowest race. Jesse Cole, let's see what you got going on. You've ever seen babies in crawling position. On your marks, get set, go parents to the end. And look at them go! And like Elliot's. Wesley! And here comes Beckham! Look at this race! It's Beckham and Presley! Presley's getting a good lead, she takes the break, and here comes Beckham! And Presley's going to the side! Beckham's to Presley's going backwards! And here comes Beckham! What a race! It's coming down to the wire! Wait, here comes Presley! Beckham stalling! Presley stalling! Here she comes! And at the end! He wants to go! Presley still saying! And Beckham! Beckham stops! Right here! And he's really sad, but here comes Presley! Presley's chilling. It's coming down to the wire. 10 seconds left. Presley's still going strong. Looking at her competitors. Nine, eight. Presley's going all over that direction. She's trying to trick Beckham. Five, four, three, two, one. And the winner with the furthest, it is Beckham. Let's hear it for our world's slowest race.
Well, Beckham may have won it, but Presley gets my showman of the world's slowest race. That was an incredible performance, as we never even had a chance to look at the party animal's defensive alignment, nor the incredible statistics of Brett Helton on the mound, because we could not avert our eyes from that incredible spectacle on the infield grass. Better late than never, though. Take a look at all the names, memorize them. We'll have a quiz next half inning. And here is Helton, ready to rumble. He has to try and hold serve for the party animals. And as I mentioned, in the top half of this frame, have not trailed in the all-important points category across their seven-game winning streak. Bananas, one run away from changing that fact. As Dier Meadows with a 1-1 count on him, the center fielder for the Nanners in his first world tour after winning the Coastal Plain League Championship alongside his starting pitcher, Jared Donaldson, this past summer. That would be the summer of 2022 for everybody keeping track. Hitting 346, a 418 on base percentage. Both of those, the second best mark for the Bananas squad as he is nearly clipped. He's gonna try and steal first. Joe Lytle scampers after the ball, doesn't have a chance in the world. And the doctor with his four, fourth steal of first base on the tour, the winning run is aboard. And that is excellent banana ball feel for DR Meadows. Brett Helton has been very successful against him, especially as of late. DR just two for 18 against Brett Helton across these last couple of starts, but is able to get the stolen base of first. And for the Bananas, who sometimes like to get their ABs in the ball game, they know they are trying to get on base in any way possible. That steal of first, huge as Dan Ober sends a deep drive out to center field, but Reese Hampton will back up near the warning track and come up with it in the deep outfield grass there in center. Good piece of hitting there from the five-year banana, Mr. Oberst, in his second campaign as a pro, but hit it to the wrong part of the park. It's 330 to each foul pole, 400 feet to dead central. And Hampton with plenty of space to haul that in for out number one. Now Michael Vitamin D in his third world tour, the former Chicago White Sox minor leaguer, trying to break open the scoreless game. DR after stealing first, now 39 for 48 in his attempts at swiping bags on the season and has been trying to get a good read on Brett Helton who goes to his slide step to help out Lytle behind the dish. And that one grazes the outside corner. Like a job in a hitter's count to steal a strike for Brett. And as they check on the doctor who's back standing. Deep hitting 303, a 377 on base percentage. Bounces that to second, could be two. Baber to Acuff, over to first. Just in time. Brett Helton holds serve. And we are scoreless with an inning in the books. And that is a terrific double play for the party animals being in excellent position there. And that also gets Brett Helton out of the inning in very quick fashion. Just two minutes and 26 seconds for Brett. Let's toss it down to Kara Wolfbauer with the head coach of the party animals, Mike Favasis. What's going on, Kara? Thanks, Miko. Thanks for joining us today, Mike. But a little more to talk to you about is Brett Helton has been absolutely exceptional on the mound as of recently. So how's the team feeling behind him tonight? Um, uh, I'm sorry, one more time, repeat it. I can't hear how is the team feeling tonight behind Brett Helton? He has three complete games so far already this season, so how are you guys feeling with him on the mound tonight as you're heading to this back half of the season? Oh, uh, we feel great with Brett on the mound. I mean, he's been lights out for us since becoming a starter. Um, he always wants the ball. Even the day after he pitches, he's like, give me the ball. Um, so we're super confident in him. All of our starters that have been doing great, um, really, but Brett, he's ready to go. Yes, now you're heading into the offensive side. How are you guys looking to perform off of Jared Donaldson tonight? Tell me about your scouting report on him. Donnie's tough. Um, we have some good hitters in the you know front part of the lineup that really hit splitters well. He's a splitter dominant guy. Um, so our approach is just to put the ball and play hard. You know, we're not trying to lift anything. Just kind of be as productive as we can with his nasty movement and hopefully, you know, squeeze across a couple points here. Yes, but the vibes have been very immaculate so far with the party animals. Last seven games, you guys have you guys have only needed to give up one for the for the bananas to be able to take the season so far. So what are you guys doing to kind of keep moving forward and win out the rest of the year? Um, so honestly, the, the key is to just make let let our position players do the work. That's that's really what everything we've been doing. Um, I think it was Brett went the whole game last time with no strikeouts. He did a whole complete game, no strikeouts. So it's just letting our defense work and do what they need to do, and we've been successful doing that. Thank you so much, Vava. Looking forward to seeing you guys out there tonight. Thanks for joining us, Joe. Set it back up to Biko and the guys in the booth. Thank you so much, Kara, and thank you, Vava, as well. That was... Very insightful to get inside 
the third year party animal, his first year at the head of the ball club is the entire field is vacated, which means the bananas with a specialty entrance to the field here defensively. As they all lip sync. You get a good look at our director of creative content, a Syracuse University alum like myself, Yvonne Trezak, who is about to speak. The two of us at the SI Newhouse School of Public Communications, the best in the biz. Really cool opportunity for us yesterday. Now, good folks of SU get to see Yvonne doing what he does best. And I'm sure you will see that content on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter. Pick your choice. They'll be on one or two of them in the near future. Is with his five, six, seven for the party animals here in the top of the second. Bryson Bloomer, Joe Lytle, and Jason Swan, the three hottest guys in the lineup. All due to swing it here as that foul ball is not caught. Yeah, and Bryson Bloom are a perfect table setter in this situation, batting 471 here in September. Eight hits, seven runs scored, two doubles, two runs batted in. And by the way, he has not been slacking defensively either. Six trick plays. So sturdy when there is not an opportunity for trickery as well. That one leaves NBT Bank Stadium, so a full count on the Boomer in his first world tour. That one was caught on a ricochet. They will ask Reggie Liggins. He is saying, out, this is wrong. Do not, Reggie, please do not make this the call. Okay, no, he's saying that it was not caught. Golly, I saw him put the arm up. Like, no, what are we doing, Reggie? No, 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 no. Stop it, stay in the box, Bryson. Oh, we feel so powerless when we are up in the booth and it's pure pandemonium. That was a ricochet, everybody. Figure it out down there. Come on, there's one game separating these two teams with two games to play. We can't be monkeying around. Reggie trying to explain his case. Whatever your case is, Reggie, it was caught on a ricochet. Let's play ball. All right. Gosh, that was terrifying. Oh, that was a close one. <laughs> you start to sweat, the chills come over, <laughs> then you feel like you've got a fever. Loomer giving the fans another opportunity here. This one into the berm, and he has another life. Nobody has fouled out to fans more than the two-time Pettit Cup champion with the Bananas. That was in the summers of 21 and 22 for the Boomer. He has fouled out to fans eight times on this tour, gives them another chance, and he is still alive. You know, rumor has it. That's actually why Bryson Bloomer chose the number eight prior to the season for the party animals. He was hoping to end with eight foul outs to fans. Well, for his case, hopefully that's what it stays at. He works the leadoff sprint here, first for either side. The Bananas work quickly through their sprint defense. Remember in Banana Ball, ball four is fired. All seven fielders behind the pitcher and catcher have to touch it before it is live. And excellent sprint defense by the Nanners. Bloomer very fast himself, 19 steals in 24 tries. So no reason to risk it there with no outs. And Bloomer was especially tough there on Jared Donaldson, being able to foul off a couple of pitchers and avoid the ball being caught by a fan to eventually earn that sprint on, what do you know, eight pitches. <laughs> okay, crazy eights here in the top of the second. The Boomer with a good lead off first. Of course, a two-time graduate of Tyler Gillum's green light base running, green light special base running system, I should say. Now Joe Lytle leaves the zone, 1-1 one, one count on the OKC kid. And he taps that one through the right side. Loomer is getting a wave around from Vava. Bridges has a great arm, hurls it towards third on the fly. Lytle scampering towards second, he'll be there. Excellent and aggressive base running by the party animals as they have two runners in scoring position with nobody gone. And it was a good throw by Noah Bridges and you know that you're in a very competitive game where you are trying to keep the party animals out of scoring position, but I'm honestly a little surprised that for Noah there, he didn't just decide to hit the cutoff man and risk Joe, who is an aggressive runner, move up to second base like he did there. Bananas bring the infield in for Jason Swan. Mentioned it at the top of the inning, but these three guys, Bloomer off third, Lytle off second, and now Swanee in the box are the three hottest party animals right now, hitting five, six, and seven in their order. And as Donnie dials up a fastball and evens up the count at a ball and a strike. And for Swan, it's a 375 batting average here in September, and he actually had five runs batted in across the three games in Milwaukee last weekend. And three of them 
came in the nightcap last Saturday in Franklin Field. He's ahead two balls and a strike. And down the extra hitter position for the Animals this evening. Check swing, tapper to the right side. Bloomer has to stay put, and EJ grabs Swan trying to evade the baseline. That is a massive first out for Donnie. And a big one at that, exactly what you were saying. Good job by Eric Jones Jr. being ready to possibly fire home, but a wise decision by Bryson Bloomer, and one that says, I trust the rest of my lineup to produce here. He stays put at third base, and Eric Jones Jr. able to get the put out there and get a big first out. Now he has the veteran, Sam Claycamp, in his third World Tour, second with the Party Animals, after he was the second man picked on the One City World Tour in 2021. When he was a banana, also a 2018 collegiate banana before that. Showing good patience here. Ahead two balls and no strikes. He's the donut hitter. So if he strikes out, Duncan will provide the full capacity crowd over 11,000 Bananiacs with free donuts. But these first at bats for Sam Claycamp have not been very kind to him, but he is going to change that here. Ripping it down the left field line, and that will bring around two for the party animals. And Sam Claycamp, despite not hitting very well with runners in scoring position, is going to get the party animals on the board in the second. He's been playing sparingly as an assistant coach on this squad. So not a huge sample size, but that is his fourth and fifth runs batted in on the tour. So he nearly doubles his stake outputs here in 2023. And now he is in scoring position as the baton is passed to Dustin Baber, the second baseman. Jackson Olsen never had a chance in the world at that at third. It was blistered off the bat. The pride of Columbus, Indiana. He gives way to the man out of Babson Park, Florida. Baber ripping his patented Irish jig as he skips into the box, only hitting 236, a 304 on base percentage. Known for what he does with the glove as he taps this one to the right side, Donnie not doing anything crazy. Make sure he secures the second out as Clay Camp advances 90 feet. And we get to the 10 hole where Chase Acuff, the shortstop, resides. And here's where this gets a little interesting for Jared Donaldson. Obviously, you're a little frustrated. You've given up two runs here in the second to the party animals, but it's all about not letting yourself get frustrated. You're only possibly going to allow the party animals to get the first point from there. It's about dialing it back in and pitching the rest of your outing, keeping them off the board and trusting in your offense to back you and get those points back. That one off the hands. Collected by Jackson Olsen, who fires across the diamond in time. And the damage is limited to two runs, but that is a huge two spot. Both of them driven in by Slim and Sammy Claycamp as Lytle and Bloomer reaching to start the inning both score. And now the Bananas will need two runs to tie the inning three to win it. And let's take a trip to PowerPoint land where Josh has some of the biggest numbers of the tour for us. Yeah, that's exactly right. We're actually going to touch on our stats of the 2023 tour. We're kind of looking at a grand summary. And by the way, little bit of a new looking PowerPoint. Shout out Amelia Berg. She's helped with our backdrop. She also designed this sweet slide deck. So pros pro. Big shout out. Yeah. So let's look at the MPI data from our tour this year, and we're going to look at our top five marks of all time. Of course, DJ the Invader in Des Moines with 57 seconds, the only sub one minute inning we've ever seen. How about Brett Helton, who has matched his second place record twice, one minute and 11 seconds, and believe it or not, 89 total half innings have been recorded under two minutes in the history of Banana Ball. That is not just including 2023, but also One City World Tour, Summer Series, and of course the 2022 Tour. Now, notable offensive statistics, Reese Hampton has been in a league of his own this year. He has the longest hitting streak in Banana Ball history, 25 games, three separate four-hit games in Banana Ball history this season, and 69 runs scored in 67 games, and that's without being a designated runner, which is insane. Skull and Bloomer, 10 total bases. They hold the single-game record. It happened in the same game. Skull had a cycle. Bloomer had a multi-home run game and a double, and that was also the game in which we saw the most runs scored in a single game, 25 between the party animals 
and the bananas. And now, as we look at tour leaders in batting, Reese Hampton pacing and hits and doubles. It's Skull leading in triple sprints and strikeouts. Skull also tied with Bloomer in RBIs. Hosley leading in walk-offs. And you see the pitching leaders, Kyle leading in a couple different categories. But it is Brett Helton who is now back out on the mound, leading in points earned and points lost on the tour. And just continues to see if he can get another point up two runs in this inning. That will raise his points plus minus to plus four. Eric Jones Jr. drives it down the left field line. It's a foul ball. The tour leader in Dingers tried to make it a Baker's dozen. Currently, he sits at 12. The former Seattle Mariners and Minnesota Twins minor leaguer. The Mariners bullpen catcher last summer. A big reason why that became the best bullpen in Major League Baseball. And they made it all the way to the ALDS through the wild card round, eliminating the Blue Jays. It is the beef of the Bananas order here, four, five, and six. EJ with the one-two count. That one misses down. Brett Helton, a ninth round draft pick of the Pittsburgh Pirates back in 2015. Spent four years in their organization. Four years in the American Association after that. The majority of it with the Fargo-Moorhead Red Hawks, although he did finish up with the Milwaukee Milkmen last summer. So what he goes to here, he throws four seam, two seam, cut fastballs, a changeup, and a curveball. He will throw any of his five pitches in any count. That is a nasty one right there, right on right changeup, and he has his first K of the night. And we've seen Eric Jones Jr. across Brett Elton's last two starts. He started to hit him a little bit better, but that changeup, low and away, has continued to cause him fits. A big reason by EJ has had quite a few strikeouts against Brett Helton since his move to the rotation. Oh, red light, green light. This is a, normally a run celebration the party animals will whip out from time to time, and Helton always the head honcho of it. So now at the center of the spectacle here in Syracuse, he takes center stage with all eight of his fellow fielders joining in on the fun and shows the incredible athleticism that Mr. Helton employs as six foot three, 220 pound starters back onto his feet in a jiffy. The czar walk up to the dish here for Dakota McFadden, the DH currently being hidden by all of his teammates. D.R. Meadows doesn't want to let go. And it's going to take Flash the Kid, Vinny Derubius, and Zach Phillips to separate the Bananas center fielder from their designated hitter. You know, sometimes just takes a nice little group hug up to the box to get you going, but D.R. really didn't want to leave Dakota McFadden's side there. I, I am feeling the love tonight. Mentioned Sam Claycamp, who had the two-run double, the separator here in this second inning, was the second man picked on the One City World Tour. That's because he was snagged after this guy, Dakota McFadden, who's now in his third world tour with the Nanners, who has picked 1-1. He's got all the pop you're legally allowed to put into someone from Rocky Mount, North Carolina. In fact, from anyone on the eastern seaboard in that respect. He sends a hot shot at his fellow three-time world tour man, Sam Claycamp, who can't handle it and shows to his dugout. That was a knuckleball coming towards him, coming every which way. Your official scoring ruling, Josh. We are hitter scorekeepers, Biko, and that one is good in my book. Okay, Brett Helton might have some words for us after the ball game. Hopefully this doesn't come back to bite him. Talk to Slim and Sammy as well. He is normally very sure-handed over at first base. Only two errors on the tour. And he's two for two in his trick play attempts. Now Danny Hosley, the tour leader in walk-offs with 28 inning enders represent the second innings tying run. And down second base tonight. So pacing the bananas with his 19 doubles. Sends that one out of the ballpark, uncatchable by the fans. And you saw Danny in game two of the doubleheader in Milwaukee leave the yard for the bananas and tie up the inning. And you felt like that was going to give the bananas a lot of momentum with that big swing. But once again, they just continued to be a team that could not continue to score across further innings. But for Hosley, who continues to swing the bat well, especially since the month of June, he has not batted below 300 in a month since then. 
Can he find himself a way to once again tie up this inning at two for the Bananas? Nasty two-seamer. Nearly clips Danny Do-It-All. And Helton, who very rarely gives up sprints, is in a hitter's count behind three balls and a strike. Fills up the zone. That one cranked fair down the left field line. Jake Skoll hustling after it. D-Mac approaching third base, gets the wave around from Gillum. Osley will trot into second as McFadden scores. And the inning lead cut in half in one fell swoop. Now the tying run in scoring position. And Jackson Olsen will represent the potential inning winner. And this is why the Bananas have moved Danny Hosley back into the sixth spot in tonight's game. Not only did he have the home run in the last game batting in the sixth hole, but when Jackson Olsen was out for injury, who had primarily batted in that sixth spot for the Bananas, it was Danny Hosley who stepped up to fill that void and batted very well. And the Bananas want him to stay on that roll as they try and get that one last win. And once again, you see Hosley producing in that spot for the Bananas and it appears that they will keep him on the base pass to run for himself. Yeah, Danny is superhuman, just about as fast as anyone in Banana Land, so no reason to burn Malachi Mitchell on Haas, who now has his team leading 20th two-bagger. And here is the greatest showman of Banana Land, the great eight, Jackson Olsen. Who fouls that one off of the facade on the top deck. Right of New Milford, Connecticut. Four years of college ball at the University of Hartford. Finished up with one year at Stetson. Sends this a mile high. Tanner Thomas underneath. He will have out number two as Hosley deeks towards third and wisely slams the brakes. Brett Helton, one out away from earning the first point tonight. The Bananas, one Bill Leroy home run away from stealing that point from the Animals. And Bill has only had one home run on the season for the Bananas, but has really picked it up in the extra base hit department since developing a leg kick in the middle of the season. But that's not all. I think Bill would be just as happy being able to tie this inning up. And something that is worth noting, especially lately, he is averaging close to five pitches per plate appearance here in the month of September. So he's been a very difficult at bat for party animals pitchers in making them work. Beautiful curveball, scrapes the bottom of the zone. Bill behind 0-1. Goes off speed once again. That time it's the changeup. Ends up right down the middle. And two strikes on the Nanner's backstop. That one just barely foul down the third base line. Good fight there by Leroy. And proud of Dublin, Georgia in his sixth season as a banana, second as a pro. 2021 Coastal Plain League champion as well as Breakfast Bowl champion. Another 0-2 coming. Osley leads off second, the potential tying run. And that one, where did it miss? Oh boy. Helton Lytle and the rest of the party animals bunch was headed towards the dugout. They thought they had the first point of the night, but Vincent Chapman keeps them all out in the field. Yeah, and that's a tricky situation, and hopefully for Brett Helton, it hasn't dialed him out of this inning. He can come back and pound the strike zone and continue to not let this little moment affect him and lead the, another run scoring here for the Bananas. This one chopped towards second. Dustin Baber bobbles the ball, kicks it around. Hosley being waved home. Throw from Baber. In time! What a recovery from Derek Ginger. Barring a challenge, the party animals win the second inning, two runs to one. And you are seeing the bananas and the fans calling for the challenge. A lot of guys asking for that confetti to be popped, but we are not yet seeing it here in the second. We'll get another look at it. I think the bananas may have missed an opportunity here. I know it's early. But from our castle in the sky here in NBT Bank Stadium, it looked like Hosley was safe. We get another look. Oh boy. Tough to tell at that speed. 
it is very hard to say. And from the angle up here, it was it was difficult to say whether Hosley was able to get his hand on the plate there before Joe Lytle could make the tag. Well, as an unbiased banana ball broadcaster, I was hoping he was out because Bill Leroy should have been struck out on the previous pitch. Ball doesn't lie. And the party animals for the eighth straight game claim the first point available. They won the first seven. And they stay hot here tonight in Syracuse. We'll head to the third inning after Maceo and the fellas dance us there. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your players. Incredible work as per usual by Maceo Harrison representing the Bananas. It was Malachi Mitchell, DJ the Invader, Alex Ziegler, and Vinny DeRubius for the party animals. Jake Lealios, Colin Ledbetter, Sean Fluke, and Tucker Perry as you get another couple looks on the replay at home plate that ended the inning. Party Animals end up winning it two runs to one and are up one to nothing in the all important points category. This is the perfect shot right here. And I'll tell you what, I think Vincent Chapman got it right. Reese Hampton at the top of the order, lines it into a diving catch from Noah Bridges. Hot start to the third, one away. Fantastic jump from Noah Bridges. It is going to get the applause of the man on the mound, Jared Donaldson. And boy, it's a tough out for Reese Hampton, especially considering he is still gunning for 100 hits on the season. And that one could factor in big as we get into Cooperstown. He went one for four on Saturday night with two line outs, a screaming line drive that turned into a one hopper for an out, and a flare base hit. Banana ball, just like its predecessor baseball, not a fair sport. For Donaldson. No one count here on Dalton Cornett. Will break out into a little all of the lights dance and fires a heater low. Cox, Hosley, and Meadows all join in on the fun and now retreat back to their normal, normal defensive alignment. Bananas play Cornett to pull pretty heavily. He singled through the right side and now Danny Hosley, just a few steps from Eric Jones Jr. at first. He is pinching off that hole, which Leaves a lot of real estate on the right side of the infield towards second base. This one clangs down in the concourse. And a 2-2 count on DC3. Yeah, overall you're seeing a lot of room up the middle for Dalton Cornett to just be able to hook one past Jared Donaldson up the mound and dribble into center. But this is the reason you still see Cox and Olsen on the left side of the second base bag is because you saw with that foul ball from Cornett, a guy who hits a lot of balls to the opposite field. Not this time. Bounces it to Jones, who is positioned perfectly. And two up, two down for Donnie, looking for his first one, two, three frame of the evening. Sets his sights on Tanner Thomas, who flew out to left his first time. Tanner, a 2018 and 19 collegiate banana, back when he was at Tallahassee Community College. Man out of Fleming Island, Florida, originally. Just like Zach Blankenship, his teammate on the Party Animals. Tanner then spent three years at Virginia Tech, and now in his second season as a Party Animal. He bounces out to the right side. Osley makes the play, and Donnie awful efficient as he retires the top three in order in the top of the third. Just eight pitches for Jared Donaldson here in the top of the third, and his fastest minutes per inning mark of the night as well. Just two minutes and seven seconds for the righty. Let's get it down to Jesse Cole. Time for one of our newest promotions, the Dizzy Dino Race. Jess, take it away, buddy. Here's Dino, Tim. Dino Ryan's already confused. And here's how it's going to work. They're going to have to spin around the bat. 
then pick up some of the eggs and put them in the basket. Very simple promotion here. Dinos, heads on your bat, on the ground. No, 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 get up, please. Do it normal. Guys, guys, hey. All right, put your bat down. We're going to spin. On your marks, get set, go. We're at one. Keep it going. We're at two. One looks very weak and feeble. The other one looks stronger. We're at three. Keep it going. Four. This is Dizzy Dizzy Dino for a reason. Five, six, seven, go, go, go. All right, let's get the... There goes down one dino. Let's get the eggs. Here we go. And let's see who gets the most eggs. We got 10 seconds. Nine. This is not how we wrote this up. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And let's see. Dizzy Dino. Three, six, nine, ten. Three, six, nine. 14, the winner over here, who is cut out of his dino suit. I'm very confused right now. <laughs> okay, I don't, I don't know why Jesse is confused by that. Maybe he thought these were actually dinosaurs we had, and all of a sudden there was a human head protruding out, and it really threw him for a loop. You're just as baffled as our fearless leader. <laughs> yeah, I'm in. <laughs> We were really lost in thought there. Well, you know, this isn't the Mesozoic period anymore. <laughs> it's good. Good dino era drop right there. That's why we pay you the big bucks. Number two. The bottom of the third inning, party animals lead by one in the all important points category. Nine, ten, and then one. Due to swing it for the Nanners. That's Ryan Cox, Noah Bridges, and then back at the top of the order, David Ray Meadows. Coxie, the shortstop behind 0-1. Loops that one up the middle. That is a heck of a piece of hitting. Nanners just need one run to win the frame. So that potential winning run is aboard. And Coxie immediately pinch run for by Malachi Flash the Kid Mitchell. And it makes complete sense why you would do it. You're nearing the bottom of the order when it's about to roll back around, and then you could insert Malachi again. And he still hasn't pinch ran in this ball game, and, and is an upgrade over Ryan Cox in the speed department. Let's see if he can get into scoring position already with Noah Bridges still up at the up at, play at the plate. <laughs> we got there in the end. Like Mel Kuyper there for a second. <laughs> Bridges. Now has a chance to grab a 13th walk-off on the tour. He evades the diving attempt of Dustin Baber. Malachi goes station to station. A good start for the Nanners. The bottom two in their order with base knocks. Pushes the inning winning run into scoring position. And now D.R. Meadows, who stole first base in his first plate appearance tonight. The doctor with 22 walk-offs. Tied for third on the tour. Incredible speed at both bases for the Nanners as Noah shanks that one towards second. Baber's only play is at first. He makes it. Not what DR was trying to do, but a pretty productive r out there is now the inning winning run 90 feet away. Just about as good a situational hitter as you can find, Dan Oberst at the dish. Yeah, you're not going to complain about that at bat at all from DR Meadows, despite hitting it very softly with good speed on the base pass. It was able to get Bridges and Malachi both into scoring position, and it's effectively a swinging butt there for the Bananas. Infield in for the party animals. 0-1 coming to Dan the man. Able to check his swing, doesn't bite on uh, the off speed that dives out of the zone. Animals outfielders playing a lot further in than they normally would for Dan as well. No reason to be any further back. They have to be ready to field a fly ball and send it home with the son of an Olympic sprinter, Malachi's father, Dennis Mitchell. Gold, silver, bronze medals, the whole lot of them all throughout the 90s in the Olympics and World Games. This one up the middle, Dan Oberst does the job. He has his second walk-off in as many games. That's his 21st of the tour. 
And we're knotted at a point apiece with three innings in the books. And it seemed like a great situation for Dan Oberst with two guys on and only one out. He has hits in five of his last six games for the Bananas. And you, of course, said he had the walk-off in their last contest, game two of the doubleheader in Milwaukee. He once again comes through for the Bananas and continues to be this steady force in an offense that has been lacking that here in the month of September. It all started with a flick of the bat from Ryan Cox to get on. Malachi Mitchell scores the inning-winning run in his stead. And we send it back down to Jesse, where we have cornhole water balloons. Mr. Cole, take it away, please. We're going to have fun down here with an old-fashioned game of cornhole. Except we're going to do it a little bit different. Because here, this is human cornhole. We've got two families, the Cole family and the Urowski family. And the dads are actually going to be the cornhole set. And we're not playing with bags. On this really hot and humid night, we're playing with water balloons. So, dads, in your positions. It is time for water balloon, human, cornhole. Here we go. Oh, we got one. Now this side, here we go. Oh, off the face. Ouch. We're at two. Here we go. Nope, we missed here. Let's go. All right, we are <laughs> at one to one. Oh, and they are definitely not throwing underhand here. All right, we are two to one. What is that? This is the most vicious cornhole. Oh, there we go. It looks like, oh, off the face. <laughs> Here we go, last few throws, and the moms. Oh, down one first. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, and the winner, I think it is. Oh, oh. <laughs> are we tied right here? The winner is the Cole family. And there you have it, water balloon cornhole. Well, of course, Jesse Cole jests when he says a hot and humid night in Syracuse. It is now 59 degrees, and the air is thin as could be. Nico Scala with Josh Tolevsky now getting to welcome in Cowboy Kyle Lewigs up into the broadcast booth in what is as much of a playoff atmosphere as I've ever gotten to experience in the young history of banana ball. Kyle brought Josh and myself right in for a, a beautiful close-up in the booth. It was not taken, but I appreciate what you were doing. It, it really changed the audio levels there. Well, we saw it and we felt it, and I think this is going to make me feel something as Vincent Chapman's going to do what he does best. We have ourselves a 1-1 game in points. It's 4-5-6 for the party animals. 0-1 count on Jake's goal while Vincent calls time, dusts off home plate, and dazzles. 285th straight sold out crowd in Bananas history. Now we'll get back to the action. You know, I, I rode the elevator down with Vince this morning and he told me that tonight he was gonna call that one the Syracuse Shimmy. I love it. Feels right. We get some specialized dances here. It's at the crossroads of the Knickerbocker State. Skull struck out on three pitches his first time. Fastball, fastball, splitter. Now a ball and a strike. Bloomer waits on deck, Lytle in the hole. This one flicked to the left side of the infield. Cox doesn't have a chance in the world to get Skull. He eats the ball. And Jake with an infield single to kick off the fourth. And Jake, an incredible hitter for the party animals all season, and that's his 19th hit to the opposite field. So even when he's going up a guy in Donnie who has had his number all season, he's just able to get the bat out there and hit it where the bananas are not shifted and get himself on base. It's a good start to the fourth for the animals who now find themselves in a one-point tie. Mason Bloomer faces off against his teammate from a summer ago. Once again, he worked a ball for sprint on an eight-pitch battle his first time. Skull with excellent speed on first base as this one looped to right. Noah Bridges has a beat on it, makes his second fantastic diving catch of the ball game. Boy, he covers a lot of ground out there. 
And this is again why you've seen Noah Bridges in the lineup tonight for the Bananas. Not always the most solid offensively, but a guy who continues to sparkle with the glove and the arm out there in right field. That was a tremendous play. I think Reggie, the field umpire, is saying that he, Noah didn't catch the ball. Well, that sounds like the wrong call because we just had a replay and saw Noah completely catch that ball. What is going on tonight? The fix is in. Reggie Liggins is trying to tear the party animals apart. I mean, what are we doing here, Reg? Come on now. That was a beautiful catch. Even Noah Bridges. And we, we've got a fan challenge. Okay. Good work by the fans. They are currently two for 27 in their career overturning plays. I have a feeling they're gonna be three for 28 after this one, but we shall see. Good luck, boys, I'm perplexed. We get to slap on the Rito headsets, take another look. That is an out. That's a, it's a clear catch, overturn it, let's play ball. Okay, awesome. What are we doing? Well, I'll tell you what, what, what we are doing. The fans have overturned their third call in banana ball history. And Jake Skull gets to remain on first base. Now, if, he, if, if that did get overturned for some odd reason, would we, would we have had a double play on our hands? Yes, that's exactly what was about to happen. It was. Going to be a 9-3 <laughs> double play on a ball that Reggie Liggins inexplicably decided was not caught by Noah Bridges and was going to take Jake Skull off the base pads, who is 16 for 19 in his stolen base attempts. Okay, time to reel it back in. Surprised you don't got the windows up here. I feel like you got a pretty good chance of catching a foul ball up here, boys. Now, I don't want to continue to harp on this challenge, but <laughs> I literally think we have just realized one or just found ourselves in a challenge where the bananas and the party animals both, in a sense, kind of won. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the bananas would have won the most if that was not overturned because they would have had a double play. But even Noah Bridges was saying out in right field, I caught that ball. What's the <laughs> issue here? He was adamant about it out there. Correct, even if it was going to go against a uh, better play for his team, but that's just the kind of guy that Noah Bridges is. Joe Lytle gives it a good ride to left. Michael D will track it down. Skull retreats back to first base with two outs now. And Biko, you touched on it um, earlier when I got up on the booth. I just wanted to say how insane it feels like a playoff atmosphere down there on the field. Um, I definitely thought Milwaukee was next level, but Syracuse has continued to trump this. Barry said it best um, in the dugout. He said, you know, whenever it gets cold out, that's that tends to feel like when the real baseball gets played. And if you're playing when it's cold, you're doing something right. So, Kyle, has the clubhouse, has VIB, has the parade, has anything felt differently given the magnitude of today's game? I think, yeah, I mean, the mo mo probably the most surprising thing, good pitch there from Donnie is, you know, a lot of people coming in for VIB and a lot of people in the parade, you know, know how much this game means. Whether they've been following on the tour or, you know, if um, they read up before they came to this game in Syracuse, they're all really big banana fans that we met and want us to win this game and, and win the tour out tonight. And I think that they will, in a sense, be proud that, they, that we were able to do it in Syracuse. I feel like they would feel like they own the tour if we were able to do it in their home field in their home state. Maybe, just maybe, a few of them out there were paying close attention as a couple palookas named Josh Tolevsky and Biko Scala <laughs> broke down the stakes of this ball game beforehand when they were out in the party plaza. That makes so much sense now. It could have been those guys. I mean, they were, they were on it. And they may have known if we had not told them or reminded them, but had to make sure that the magnitude of this ball game was fully understood by the masses as Jason Swan peppers that down the left field line. Jake Skull off on the pitch, scores easily, and that is a huge, huge piece of two-strike, two-out hitting 
from Swanee, who has his sixth run driven in across his last four games. And it's another double down that third base line that's able to stay tucked in that bag and roll fair and bring across runs for the party animal. So a good piece of hitting by Jason Swan, being able to turn on that inside pitch from Donnie and get the party animals back on the board and possibly back out to another lead in the point department as well. 48th run driven in on the season for Swanee. He is now two away from half a hundred with a game and a half to go on the tour. Sam Clay Camp drove in a pair his first time with a double down the left field line. Fouls that one off the netting behind 0 and 1. Kyle, with you guys obviously losing the past seven straight games, you haven't led any of those games in points. Was there any level of deflation in the dugout when the party animals miraculously won that second inning with the, the heads-up play by Dustin Baber to get the ball home in time as Jared Donaldson making the call. Now he's going to let EJ take control, and that is the final out. But you guys currently locked in a 1-1 game in points and trailing the fourth inning by one run. Yeah, definitely like what we're seeing tonight. You know, anytime that you get a chance to lead an inning or, you know, win an inning and ultimately be winning in points, that's, that's good, and that's how you want to continue that pace of the game. But, yeah, I would say, you know, it's not necessarily comfortable with being in a losing situation which we found ourselves in unfortunately a lot um, you know over these past seven games but I feel like you know it's we all know it's a long ball game and uh, we feel comfortable with Donnie out there on the mound and whoever else is going to follow him and you know I think early on in this game you saw three hits in that one inning and just guys having a lot better at bats whether it's running up uh, Helton's pitch count and um, you know trying to get into that bullpen or doing a better job of that or just you know playing selfless baseball DR had a huge no out runner on first and second getting the guys over pretty much as best as you could do and not bunt the ball and get the guys over and then Dan come up and drive them in. I mean it's it's good baseball early on and I'm excited to see how it's going to play out. Brett Helton is coming off of three straight complete games as we hey baby here in NBT Bank Stadium. But he's only credited with two and a third innings tonight and your bananas have notched five hits off of him already. It's been a combination of hard contact but also just excellent pieces of hitting by Cox and Bridges in the bottom of the third inning to, as Wee Willie Keeler would say, hit it where they ain't. I think that's one big thing that we've been leaning on as well as, you know, over these past seven games. I feel like as a group, we've done a good job of hitting the ball hard. You know, just at times, that's the beautiful thing about the game of baseball is sometimes you can hit it really hard and hit it right at somebody and all it is is an out. And I feel like we've been doing that a lot over these past seven games. And you just got to keep kind of preparing the same way and trusting the process and some of those balls should start falling if I mean if you look at it statistically or you know just the way baseball is played is some of those are going to start finding holes and finding gaps when we can score some runs. Kyle have you felt that in any way those hard hit outs and just the bad luck have caused the guys to press a little bit more at the plate? Not too much and I think you're you're really seeing them doing a good job of kind of flushing the last seven games especially early on this game tonight and seeing more pitches and, and seeing Brett more into deeper counts yeah. and and really, you know, just trust. And if you get your pitch, hit it hard. And if you hit it right at somebody, just keep trying to do that until it doesn't find somebody. Well, the 3 one five has officially gone bananas. They hey, baby, as you get a look at the update on our next show graphic. It will be our last show of 2023. That will be on Saturday, 1 p.m. first pitch. 12.30 p.m. we'll go live with the pregame show. I would wager our six-year banana in the booth with us, captain on this team alongside his partner in crime, Bill Leroy. Kyle Lewix will be getting the ball, if not from the get-go, be first out of the pen for Ryan Kellogg, but I would wager you get it from the jump. He hit the nail on the head. I think me and Kellogg are gonna, gonna try and split that game with uh, with just a dash at the end of Hosley. I think that's that's a winning recipe, and, and especially you know if we could salvage this one and, and win this game tonight, and then you know hopefully get on a bit of a streak to, to wrap up this tour beautifully in Cooperstown. Three, four, and five for the Nanners here. Brett Helton trying to secure his team's second point. Nanners trying to tie the inning with one run or double their point total by doubling up the party animals. That is a great piece of hitting by Michael Deeb and Reese Hampton not going to be able to track it down. That one into left center field. Deeb on his horse. He's going to slam the brakes as that was a one hopper fired towards third. He will grab his 19th double on the season. One behind Danny Hosley for the team lead as we kill the lights here in Cuse. Malachi Mitchell out to pinch run for Vitamin Deeb. 
And here comes Eric Jones Jr. as the lights are back in action. And the full capacity crowd here on our 32nd stop of the tour joining in on the fun. How about that for a light show? That is a fun one. <laughs> The beautiful technology that is LED lights. The director of entertainment, Zach Frangelo, will continue <laughs> to pester Jesse Cole for whatever kind of insane bill it is to install some LEDs in our 97-year-old ballpark in Savannah. I don't think there's anybody on this organization, players or you know front staff, that's, that's going to argue and not be on Zach's side on that one. Right. It's only money, isn't it? That one chopped up the middle. Malachi getting the wave around. Hampton's not going to throw it. He doesn't have a chance. Eric Jones Jr. ties up the inning at a run apiece. And he represents the potential winner over at first base. And this is what you are finally seeing for the Bananas, just getting hits to fall in safely. And Eric Jones Jr. has been really great all season, batting with runners in scoring position. But you've got to credit Michael Deeb leading off that inning and doing what he has done so well, driving the ball out to that left center gap and hitting for extra bases, and also being able to benefit from a little bit of a shallow fielding route from Reese Hampton as well. DJ with his 53rd ribeye on the season. One behind Skull and Bloomer for the tour high. Hit it where they ain't, baby. It's happening. I think I reverse broadcast jinx that. I, I don't want to take credit for this inning, but, <laughs> you know, I might try to. You got to do what you got to do. Change up misses in. Dangerous 2-0 pitch. Now it is 3-0 as Helton just barely has missed the outside corner twice. He was hoping for at least one of those calls from Vincent Chapman. I want to sound like a broken record, but the Bananas have not led in points across the last eight games. That includes tonight. Helton loses the zone. It's four straight bad ones to DMAC. EJ is going to easily have third base. Party Animals with efficient sprint defense, keeping McFadden at first, and Jones 90 feet from scoring the inning-winning run. And now the tour leader in walk-offs, Danny Hosley, an RBI double his first time. We'll dig in. And we talked about it pre-game here for Brent Helton across his last 25 and two-thirds innings entering tonight. Just one sprint allowed. So seeing one here in the fourth inning is kind of rare for Brett, and even more so considering four consecutive balls outside to McFadden. He gives DMAC a look over at first, who is not being held on by Sam Claycamp. That has changed. <laughs> Infield in for the party animals. Big gap to the right side now that... Sam and Slammy's on the bag. This one popped towards the fans. They could get the party animals an enormous first out. And it does not happen. 0-1 oh, count on Haas. They'll say there are a couple nooks and crannies in this stadium here that we got that, you know, from the field level when I was down there, man, it's tough to see. I mean, there's a couple debates whether they caught it or not, and I, I, I couldn't see anything from the dugout. The first one in which Grayson Bloomer was almost retired was off of the roof of NBT Bank Stadium. Uh, As this one is popped behind home plate, coming right towards us in the booth, and it ends up falling harmlessly below us. You, I mean, you don't want to open these windows? I know I, it's a little chilly out there, but... We what, I mean, what are you going to do if you miss the opportunity because it clangs off this window? I'll never forgive then, myself. Yes, you won't be able to live with yourself. Kyle, we've got cat-like reflexes. We can open, open up it these, before no, the ball comes No, we can open up here. these windows and Josh, catch get it out of here. That's in, ridiculous. That's ridiculous. No, it's not. It's not ridiculous. <laughs> Osley battling at the dish, still behind one and two. Now don't you feel like you're at a ball field, Biko? It's crisp. I mean, I, you can call the game, get to a prep step in between each pitch, and yes. you're ready to catch the darn ball. I completely understand how the change in temperature <laughs> as we are below 60 degrees here in the Salt City, adds to the intrigue and the stress at hand here as it is just that much more of a playoff, playoff atmosphere here on September 14th. It's a little chilly, I'll admit it, but boy, does this kind of weather just get me feeling whimsical. Yeah, I mean, it's great stuff. This is what you, I mean, you went to school here for so long, Biko. You know what it's like. This one bounced to second. Faber has to come home with it. He's got EJ between third and home plate. Now Lytle trying to grab the out. Bloomer chases EJ into the infield. Tough to be a Monday morning quarterback, but Jones 
But DMAC, enough time to get to third base there. If Bloomer had just let Eric run into the infield, he would have been out of the baseline, and they could have had a chance at a huge, albeit bizarre, double play. Yeah, definitely, but regardless, really good job on the base path, no matter how it worked out for the Bananas. I mean, you take, you trade the out, and you've now got runners in scoring position again for Jackson Olsen, who likes to swing early and often, and hopefully gets a pitch to drive in DMAC from third. It's a 4-2-5 fielder's choice. <laughs> DMAC is the new inning winning run, 90 feet from scoring. Jackson Olsen flew out deep to right his first time, gets a heater blown past him. He's behind no balls, two strikes. And you've seen the party animals quite a few times this season use those kinds of base running strategies against the bananas. It's nice to see the bananas who use it in their favor as Jackson Olsen hits this one out to the opposite field and will drive home Dakota McFadden and walk off the inning for the bananas. What a come from behind inning for the boys in white and yellow. D-Max scores the inning winning run and Maceo Harrison comes out to flip Joe Lytle and pull off about as good of a Michael Jackson impersonation as you can find on the Eastern Seaboard. So the boys will hop and skip their way back to the dugout. They lead two points to one. Just a phenomenal piece of hit from Jackson there. And God, I can't tell you how hard it was. We practiced that run celebration for probably 30 minutes of our rehearsal block. You get another look at the walk-off and we will hand it down to Emily Cole as we honor our Bananas Foster family of the night. Emily. When Jesse and I became foster parents three years ago, we learned a lot about the foster care world, including the fact that there are over 400,000 kids in care across country without a permanent home. So we started a 501c3 dedicated to celebrating those who are already making an amazing difference in the foster care community while educating and inspiring others to get involved. The name of that nonprofit is Bananas Foster. And tonight we have the honor of celebrating the Owen family. Brandon and Elena have been a licensed foster family for 15 years. And if in that time have welcomed over 30 children into their home. Currently, these superheroes are parenting nine kids. So fans, please stand and help us recognize this amazing family for what they're doing in our community. Super special. We get to salute the superheroes in the foster care community thanks to Bananas Foster. Over 15 years as a foster family, over 30 children have come through the home, currently nine residing there. This is what it's all about. We head to the fifth inning. Here from Syracuse, New York. The Bananas lead two points to one after winning the fourth inning by that very same score when it comes to runs. And once again, not to beat a dead horse, but they now lead in points for the first time across the past eight games, the first seven of which they lost. Keep saying it, Pico, you know, louder for the people in the back. It is what feels like a momentous, momentous inning win for the Nanners, you just had to know. You guys just had to know that you could at least lead the party animals still here on this tour. I mean, there's, I, I mean, when you date back to any team in any sport, I don't think there's ever been a team outside of maybe football, where I'm sure it's happened, that just hasn't won a game all season that they've played, you know? Now, granted, we've won games, we've went back and forth, but when they went on that seven game road stretch, you know, it's, are they gonna get to nine or are we just never gonna win a game ever again? You know, we're capable of playing this game of banana ball at a very high level. We have wins to prove so, and it's just, you know, sticking to the script. 
And what's got to feel great for this Bananas offense is just the fact that they've scored in each of the last three innings. Now, they've won two of them, but multiple hits in each of those last three innings as well. It's all about stringing together those base runners. Excellent stop there by Bill Leroy. Remember, you can steal first base in banana ball, so any ball in the dirt needs to be ascertained whether they are men aboard or not. In fact, we saw D.R. Meadows steal first base in the bottom of the first tonight. It is 9, 10, and then one for the Animals here at the top of the fifth. Baber, Acuff, and Hampton, and that is a shot into left center from the man out of UNC a and t and he's trying to make it two bags. That is a beauty of a throw from Michael Deeb as Baber's gunned down trying for extra bases. Well, that was a great piece of hitting by Dustin Baber on Tua. It actually extends now an eight-game hit streak for him. But Michael D played that ball very well. He didn't have to kind of back pick and make that throw. It was a really good play. And he's got a great arm out there in left field. It was a little aggressive by Dustin Baber. And that was a sign of maybe the party animals pressing a little bit, trying to get another run on the board. Yeah, that was... An ill-advised attempt at second base. It took a perfect throw to nail Baber. But you have Acuff, who has been swinging the bat well, and then, of course, the powerful top of the lineup waiting in the wings. You get a first first uh, pitch strike, so why not go behind him, you know, keep him on his toes. And I think that that's definitely something that we've been doing a better job of as of late. You know, you go OO and you do it a couple times, and, and guys get used to it. But, you know, you mix it in a mid-count, and it'll, it'll really get some guys on their toes. Throw off the old rhythm there. <laughs> It does give away a ball, though, as now Acuff fouls that one away. Two and two. Grounded out to third his first time. But Bill and Jared Donaldson obviously have a pretty good scouting report here against Chase Acuff. The reason you are still willing to throw that pitch behind Acuff's backside, he's only batting 214 against Donnie, and now pops this one up in shallow right field. And Noah Bridges will bat this one up to Danny Hosley, and is a double trick play for the guys. 16th on the tour for Bridges, 24th for Danny do it -all. What a remarkable way to grab out number two here in the top of the fifth. The top of the order looming, Reese Hampton taking a winding road down to the field, coming through the stands, doing his best kid Cuddy impersonation. He liked the party animals on the pursuit of happiness. And once again, we go dark here in the Salt City. Hughes goes full Project X. You literally just took the words out of my mouth. I was going to say I can't hear that song and not think of the movie Project X. What about you, Josh? Uh, believe it or not, I was kind of thinking about that. That's, yeah. that's wild. That's what that's, they call synergy, boys. That, I was going to say synchronicity. Synchronicity? <laughs> Shout out the police. Uh, I love that album. Is that a real word? Oh, yeah. Oh. Big time. <laughs> no me. Don't doubt. ask me how to spell it. This one chopped to first. And taking it himself will be Eric Jones Jr. Lead off single. But Baber cut down trying to stretch it to two bases. So Donaldson faces the minimum. And the Bananas lead by a point. Just need one run in the bottom of the fifth to stretch it to a two-point lead. Back down to Jesse Cole. Time for a brand new promotion. We are calling Grandma Gladiators. Contestant coming out here. Please welcome. 70 year old Mandy! Come on out here, Mandy! Look at this energy! Look at the strength! And now, coming out of the same corner, 73 year old Grammy Nancy! Here she comes! And our competition tonight is pool noodle jousting. Fans, you are gonna be the judge who wins, whether it's Grammy Nancy or Grandma Mandy. Grandmas, let the contest begin. There we go. And they're coming in hard. Nancy's going, oh, she takes the shirt off. She's going aggressive. Look at her go at her. 
Nancy's going hard. Mandy's going strong. Wait, all right, time out, time out. Round one, round one. And round two begin. Here goes Mandy. There it goes. She's going hard. Ten seconds left. Nine, eight, seven, six. She's taunting. Five, four, three, two. Break it up. Vance is the winner. Grandma Mandy. Or is it 73-year-old Grandma Nancy? And in the first ever Grandma Gladiators, the winner, Nancy! That is a promotion that I would like to see again. I mean, if you didn't know any better, if you're viewing this game, you would think that those young ladies are paid actors and they go <laughs> along with it. I can't think, I don't know if I want to see it again because I don't think I can see it done as good as those two ladies just did it. Kyle, if we ever see that in the middle of a game again and you are not up here with us in the broadcast booth, I need to see you as a ring dude. That was incredible. Bottom of the order for the Nanners here, eight, nine, and 10. And your roommate across the past seven years, dating back to your freshman campaign at the University of North Georgia together, Bill Leroy, feeling the Christmas spirit as we are just about halfway through September. It feels a little early, you know, we haven't got to October yet, but guy loves any chance that he can get to play Santa Claus, I guess. We do love this song in our house, though. Me, Dan, and Bill jam to this song quite often. Let's see what he's got. It's down to 58 degrees here in Syracuse, so it's feeling like Christmas. I feel like down in the hostess city of the South. So December 25th here in the 315, it'll probably be a lot closer to zero than 58. You guys love this dance, huh? Yeah, you want to get in on this? I'll get in on it. I think I just saw for the first time what was Santa Claus get sturdy and do the gritty. Back-to-back -back dance moves leading up Bill Roy getting to the box there. Sends that one out to center. Panacorn for Reese Hampton, who backflips and makes the catch. Reese Lightning, so nice. You're going to get to see it twice, maybe thrice. What an amazing catch by Reese Hampton. Once again, the second backflip we have ever seen the party animal center fielder pull off. And an unbelievable snack being able to make the landing as well. Boy, what an incredible moment right after Bill's walk up. That's uh, how to spill the, steal the spotlight 101 there. Mr. East Hampton, take a bow, man. I how mean, the Reese stole Christmas. That's, good. <laughs> that's really good. That's, that's phenomenal, actually. Just a game and a half left on our docket. That may have been the best thing you've said all year, Josh. <laughs> well, thank you, man. That is. And you've said some good stuff, Josh. Oh, Don't let it take away from you. Correct. I wouldn't put it past you to. We'll found an even better one either tonight or Saturday in Cooperstown, New York. As we have a 3-1 count now on Ryan Cox, who flared a single up the middle his first time. You're feeling pretty good, huh? I put that right behind Big Slappy Make Pappy Happy. <laughs> and that was a call on a home run that I gave up. So it's, that it's, shows you how much I adore you guys and care for you guys. <laughs> it's kind of you, boy. <laughs> was that the... Midwesterner popping out. Oh, that was, a, that was a fumble. It was bobbled and caught. It has to be a clean catch or else things can get too dicey here in Banana Ball. But it was an amazing work on the tip drill up there in the second deck. Thing was shot out of a cannon. Coxie able to fight another payoff pitch. Eighth pitch of the at-back coming now. Shot in to left field. The glove magician, two for two. And he represents the inning winning run at first. And his can't pinch run Malachi Mitchell for him because he ran for Deeb in the fourth inning. We're still in the same trip through the order right now. They could pinch run me. I don't think Gilman and I are on the same page though, but 
This one, unfortunately, would take me a while to get down from the press box um, to get down to the field because, boy, it took me some time to get up here the first time I made it. It's a fact. And Coxie, a sneaky 8 for 8 in his stolen base attempts. Brett Helton asking for help. Vincent Chapman doesn't beg for assistance, though. It's called a strike. And a cut and a miss. A heater towards the top of the zone. Bridges singled on a grounder through the right side his first time. And nothing but a little country hardball there from Helton as he picks up his second punch out of the evening. And waves goodbye to Bridges and says hello to D.R. Meadows, who has stolen first and grounded out to second. And after going eight pitches against Ryan Cox before he was able to get that opposite field single, it was Ryan Cox, or Noah Bridges set down on just four pitches. So really good work there by Helton. Cox takes off for second. Ball is fouled off and knocked down by the netting. See Ryan trying to get the timing down of the former Pittsburgh Pirates minor leaguer on the bump. Biding his time to launch into that attack of second base. He stays put on the 0-2. Job by DR laying off the changeup. Peter yanked outside. Two balls and two strikes now. Deuce is wild. This one right side. Going to be a tough play. It's going to drop in between Thomas and Baber. Cox off on the pitch is going to stay at third base. Broken bat, bloop base hit for D.R. Meadows. And that is. The bat, he is happy to lose to grab a hit. And that's one of those two out situations that aids you as a ball club. It's D.R. Meadows who's just able to get the bat out on that one and put it into shallow right field. Cox was already off and running and just continued to run with that ball put in play and there'd be two outs. It was one of the more interesting ways to get back into a bag I've ever seen in my 25 years of life. <laughs> I was gonna say. But he was safe. I was gonna say one of the more <laughs> awkward ways I've ever seen anybody get back to the bag in my 26 years of life. But it did work as a means to an end. Here's Dan Oberst who walked off the third inning grabbing the Bananas their first point of the night. Trying to make it three points in the last three innings. Dan one for two on the evening. Cox off of third, Meadows off of first. This one chopped to the right side. Dustin Baber diving stop from his tush. Not in time at first. Dan Oberst with his second walk off of the ball game. And the Nanners lead three points to one. And once again, it's Dan Oberst who has more opposite field hits than any other banana on the season who's able to get this one over to the right side. You saw incredible range by Dustin Baber to be able to keep that one in the infield, but unfortunately, Dan, so speedy, able to get in there and get another point for the Bananas. What a perfect time to get to chat with the head coach of the Bananas, Tyler Gillum. Kara Wolfbauer has him. What's going on down there, Kara? That is Dan over second walk up of the night. So how are the vibes with the Bananas right now? How are you guys feeling on the yeah, coaching staff? Yeah, vibes are high right now. Uh, Dan Obers locked in. These boys are locked in. The tour's on the line right here tonight. So uh, it's been back and forth all year. The uh, tour's coming down to the last couple games, and uh, the guys have locked in, and they've won every moment so far. And you can really feel the energy, especially throughout the ballpark. We keep talking on the broadcast about that playoff feel. We're really feeling it right now. Noah Bridges laying it on the line twice tonight out in right, right field. So how does it feel, too, to see the guys be all in? You only need one more game to win out the rest of the season. Yeah, the defense is the big thing. Donnie's throwing really well. He's throwing hard early. Splitters have been good. We've made some really good plays defensively. Bridges had a couple diving plays plus a trick play. And uh, the guys are working counts and making Brett Helton really work and get in the zone. So. So uh, we got some special moments left in this game right here, so stay tuned. Yes, and like you said, 
Brett Helton out on the mound tonight. We've seen him go three complete games so far. Party animals have been doing it quite a few times. Can you give me any more insider on Donaldson and how long he can play to keep him out there tonight? Yeah, just stay tuned. We got something special for this inning right here. It's going to get wild. But how's it feel in this playoff atmosphere? How's oh, it feel with the, with the crowd? 14,000 people. It's one of our best crowds of the entire tour. We got 14,000 people here. It's packed. They're loud. They're getting excited. It's a fun show so far. Yes, absolutely. So thank you for joining us so much. Good luck for the rest of the game. We'll send it back up to the boys in the booth for more fun with them. Boom, baby. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gillum and Carol Wolfbauer. That is one happy head coach of the Bananas at the helm for his first world tour. He's the leader of the last five collegiate Bananas teams before leaving the Coastal Plain League. Kyle Lewix was on four of those squads. Probably just about as beautiful a smile as you have seen on Gillum's face, huh? Yeah, definitely. I can only you know, hope that he's got ambitions of, of taking his youngster that just turned three as well as his wife to uh, to Disney World if we're able to win this one out tonight <laughs> and win this whole thing. I think that that would be probably the most fitting finish that he could have. Donaldson for his sixth inning of work. He has two, three, and four as that one. Just barely grabs the outside corner. Dalton Cornett shaking his head in disagreement. Thomas on deck, goal in the hole as that one barreled to left center, but DR hustles over, he backflips, he makes the catch! Dueling, backflipping center fielders, what a magnificent way for out number one in the sixth. Two backflips in the same game! DR Meadows, you're out of your mind! An incredible start to the inning, and that was a great pitch from Jared Donaldson, being able to get that outside corner to Dalton Cornett, he goes right back to that spot. Cornet has to swing and is able to get an out of Cornet and get an easy, well, a pretty complicated <laughs> first out here in the set. And that's good baseball and good trickery there, or banana ball, I should say, as DR off on contact and really beating the ball to the spot and setting himself up to make that backflip catch is just phenomenal. The boys in center field are dueling it out. Yeah, he didn't have a whole ton of time to camp under it, but he got himself as much time as he possibly could have bought. And now a one-two count on Tanner Thomas as Donaldson has retired the last three party animals. Two of them via trick plays. Three trick plays overall being logged because the first was a combo between Noah Bridges and Danny Hosley out and right. Tanner with a monster swing on the 2-2. Two -two. Count stays the same. He's flown out to left and grounded out to second. Backflip catch, round two, electric boogaloo. We are bumping here in the Salt City. And a full count on Mr. Tinder Thomas. About to hit the 36 minute mark here on our two hour timer as Tanner draws the ball for sprint. He's gonna tap the break over at first base. Second sprinter of the night for the party animals. Both of them have just taken one bag, and he's aboard with just one out. And what's fortunate for Jared Donaldson is that both of these sprints have put the first base runner on in that inning, so they haven't come back to bite him too much. And you saw Donnie, upon missing the strike zone there on the payoff, tap his glove across his chest to Bill Arroy, say, that one was on me. He'll try and dial it back in here against Jake Skull. He's just wanting to hold himself to a higher standard. You know. That ball spanked down the right field line. It is fair. Takes a friendly bounce for Noah Bridges. Skull trying for two bags. Throw is going to come to the cutoff man home. So it is indeed a double for the former first round draft pick back in 2010. And Jake, two for three on the ball game. Party Animals, with a couple guys in scoring position and just one out. I think they're going to paint second base pink. They're <laughs> capturing awesome. the territory. Well, the Bananas are one win away from winning the tour and also taking the great Empire State. But they cannot turn second base yellow. That is officially Party Animals pink. I don't think yellow will go on top of pink. I don't know if, if it's a dominant enough color to get on top of that, that pink base that they've got down there now. Yeah, it feels like a problem for your boys. <laughs> now Bryson Bloomer. Infield in everywhere except for Cox at short, who's halfway. 
Thomas has great speed leading off of third. Same for Skoll leading off of second. And a cut and a miss. 1-1 one, one count on Bloomer, who had the first sprint of the night for the party animals. Scored one of two runs in the second inning, which they won two runs to one. That's their lone point of the ball game. And he flew out to a diving Noah Bridges in right field his last time. Now a 2-1 count. Kyle, in a situation like this as a pitcher, is this one of those moments where Jared Donaldson is really trying to hammer the splitter here against Bryson Bloomer? Yeah, definitely. I think you want to induce some, some contact on the ground, definitely, if you're going to give up some contact. Um, good fastball there from Donnie, but, um, you know, balls up in the air, typically in the outfield, it's going to be tough to throw Tanner out at home. So, you know, if you can punch a ticket here and get a strikeout or, or force some contact on the ground, I feel like both of those are wins for him on the mound. Full count, because of course it is. A take there by Bloomer after he chased on the 2-1. Huge payoff pitch coming. Two ducks on the pond, one out. And that one flicked foul and out of the premises here. It's always a foul ball, isn't it, Pico? Doubt about it. 3-2 every time, man. Boomer had an eight pitch at bat his first time. Here comes the seventh offering from Donaldson this round. It misses down. Grayson gets the sprint. Jared furious at the call from Vincent Chapman. As Thomas and Skull both score, Bloomer's tour leading 55th and 56th runs driven in. And the party animals down two points, but they lead the sixth inning by two runs. And you saw even Bill LaRoy was a little surprised that that one didn't get the strike three call on Bryson Bloomer as it took him a minute before he fired one down to Ryan Cox at shortstop to start that sprint defense for the Bananas. Bloomer's second ball for sprint of the night. He once again Hangs out at first base. See if we can get another look at that pitch from the center field camera as the party animals dance their way off of home plate and back towards their dugout. We'll get a look from behind the dish, and that's not going to tell us anything. I like where it looks from behind them at least. <laughs> <laughs> yes, didn't look bad, that's for sure. So Bloomer, who's got great wheels, is aboard, and now Joe Lytle does it. Job laying off, although it grabs the bottom of the zone. All smiles from the OKC kid. Grew up and then spent all four years of his collegiate career at Oklahoma City University. Playing for his dad, Keith. Little in his first tour as a party animal. Scorching hot since the start of August. Another pitcher's pitch, and he's behind one and two. And even when you narrow that down to just the September statistics, it's Joe Lytle, who still came into the night's contest, batting over 500 in this month, a 533 mark to be exact. Now two balls and two strikes. He's hitting 500 tonight. Single and a run scored, as well as a flyout. This one chopped towards third. Olsen attacking. Throws it across the diamond, it's wild. Looked like Leto was gonna beat it out anyhow. He scampers up to second, Bloomer coming around third. He's racing home, the throw in time. Gutsy base running from the party animals. And a perfect throw from Eric Jones Jr. makes them pay. Well, you saw Jackson Olsen pressing a little bit, fielding that ball, really trying to gun down Joe Lytle and seeing it get away from EJ. But then you see Bloomer playing it a little more aggressively than he probably should and being nailed down unless we see a possible challenge. No! No, they're going to let it lie as Donnie is replaced by Nick Allo, former Georgia Southern lacrosse player. And in the lacrosse capital of the world, Syracuse. Of course, we have to honor all the lax bros that have made the Salt City the city of champions when it comes to lacrosse. He faces Jason Swan, a fellow five-year man out of Georgia Southern, except Swanee was playing baseball the whole time. And if you're look, checking your bingo boards at home, if you had Bill Leroy catching <laughs> that one, I thought caught the outside corner. 
Um, if you had Bill Leroy catching a lacrosse pitch from Nick from Tickets with the Bananas, you better cross it off. That ball blasted out to right, but Noah Bridges will make the snag. Three pitches. And Nick Gallo gets the job done. Another life could have been added uh, to the Cuse lacrosse squad with a 10 national championship count to pace all schools in lacrosse history. Who knows, maybe Allo could have brought us back to the promised land. It's been a while. It's time to see if this young fan can outdash the flash. Well, we take a look at Malachi Mitchell ready to try and track down our contestant. Kyle Lewis, we would literally keep you in all night, but we know you have many duties, one of the most important of which being a ring dude down on the field. So I'm going to let you rejoin your friends as you guys are three and a half innings from winning this world tour. Yes, I'm very excited to uh, be in Cooperstown. Um, started tomorrow. Really excited for the experience at the Hall of Fame as well as, you know, getting a chance to pitch a double day field will be awesome. Um, before I leave, I got this from a fan, um, and I felt like you should have it, and I shouldn't. Um, it says, Q's loves to party with the bananas. It's a nice little wristband. I think you've already got one. I found one on the ground. Well, how about you take this one, because I think it just means more. If you have that one, maybe you wear two. Thank you. And uh, Chris Sachi, I know that you went to Syracuse, so if you're watching or listening like I'm sure you are, um, there's another one for you in the booth. Um, Josh, I love you. Pico, I love you. Um, give me a hug and I'll, I'll get out of you guys' hair. Thank Let's you so much. do it much. one more time on Saturday, huh, yeah. boys? Thank you so much, Cowboy Kyle. That was very kind of you. I might just pawn the one you gave me off to Yvonne Trezak. Th oh, he's already got one. Okay, well, I guess I'll just have two. Thank you, Kyle. Next time you'll see and hear from him, we'll be on the bump in Cooperstown in two days for our final game of the tour. As you can see, a new man on the mound. So Brett Helton's streak of three straight complete games has ended. And it was a much more patient and professional approach from the Nanners to send him out after just five innings pitched through tonight. Yeah, that is exactly right. I mean, considering the last two complete games for Helton were Maddox's at 97 and 98 pitches respectively, the Bananas threw five innings against Brett Hilton, made him toss 81 pitches, and the last three of the last four innings were 20 pitches or more for the righty. So they really made him work out on the mound, which he has not done a lot of recently. This is a fascinating decision made by Mike Vivasis and Sam Claycamp to go to the man presumed to be Saturday's starter for the party animals. According to ERA Plus, this is the best pitcher in Banana Land is Michael Deeb sends that deep out to left. Jake Skull leaping, crashing into the wall, and coming away with the banana ball. Fantastic catch. What an absurd catch by Jake Skull, ranging out towards that warning track, crashing up against the wall, and being able to hold on to the banana ball. An amazing play, and what a start for Drew Gillespie, who's going to give him a little finger point out there on the pitcher's mound. Deep had doubled deep out to left center his last time up. He is now two for, check that, one for three on the night as Dustin Baber gets a brutal hop, tries to recover, and EJ is going to beat that one out. That is a very tough scoring decision because that thing, like you're playing skee-ball just off the top of a ramp, and I don't think Baber could have done much else besides take it off the collarbone. Yeah, I'd really like to see that one on instant replay to be able to come away with an official decision on that ball. Just seeing it with your eyes, your penciled in decision so far, Josh. I think it's a hit. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. We are hitter scorekeepers, are we not? I only have pen, so that's going down in the scorebook for now as a base knock for Eric Jones Jr., but still up for review. Now Dakota McFadden will swing it. That one into left field. Fourth pitch of the at-bat. Gives McFadden his second hit of the night. He is two for two. With a one-base sprint. On base all three times now. And he has scored each of his first two trips on the bases. Jones up to second, McFadden on first. He represents the inning tying run. Now Danny Hosley, 28, 
walk-offs on the season. Already a two-bagger tonight. Could make it a three-point advantage for the Nanners. One gets the outside corner, count one and one. And this is a great situation for Danny Hosley, who is the bananas leader in batting with runners in scoring position. A 368 mark, but he's going to get underneath this ball. Tanner Thomas charging in will call up Dustin Baber and come away with the second out for the party animals. Tanner's first step was back. That's how you, you teach him in the outfield. He had to correct that decision though with his great speed. Loses his hat, finds the ball. And now two on with two down for Jackson Olsen, who walked off the fourth inning his last time with a little squibber through the left side of the infield. He's one for two with that ribeye. One zero count on the great eight. Gillespie can come with fastballs both cutting, four seam and two seam. Change up and curveball round out the arsenal. He is a carbon copy of Brett Helton as far as pitches go. And you saw in that second pitch another thing that's made him very effective against the Bananas as of late, stopping mid-delivery to throw off the timing of Jackson Olsen there. And luckily for him, still able to get bad on ball, albeit it was a foul. That one fouled back. To the backstop, 1-2 now on Olsen. Gillespie, a strike away from pulling the party animals back to within one point. They lead the inning by two runs. Jones leads off second, McFadden off first as the inning tying run. Jackson Olsen is the potential winner with five overs on the season. That one gets the bottom of the zone inside corner and Gillespie holds serve. Party animals claim their second point of the night and they trail three to two as we enter our final third innings of the ball game. And it wasn't an easy situation for Drew Gillespie to be inserted into. I'm not sure he thought that he would pitch in this ball game, but still able to strand some runners, a runner in scoring position for the Bananas and get out of the inning in four minutes and 30 seconds. We honor all the military members, both past and present here at NBT Bank Stadium. And pass that on to everybody watching at home. Thank you for spending your thirsty Thursday with us. Now we are joined by Jesse Cole, the man in the yellow tux. The reason why we have all come to my college town. And Jesse, it is one heck of an environment here, huh, man? This is unbelievable. Absolutely electric. I mean, from the first pitch, they've been up, standing, singing. It's really fun to see. I mean, again, we go places we've never been. You know, upstate New York. People didn't expect us to come up here. And boy, they are responding. This is pretty special, Beagle. Well, with two games left, the Bananas lead by just one. They are three innings away from winning the tour. It's less than 60 degrees. It feels like playoff banana ball. It is. Think about this. I mean, the reality is there is 12 innings left of banana ball on this tour. And I'll tell you, the competitive in this in the dugout before the game. I mean, you look, there's only four trick plays because they want to win. They want to make sure they put himself in a great position to be successful. But you still got Reese and DR going back and forth against each other. That's the banana ball spirit. That's the showmanship. And this is, uh, it's going to finish as good as we could ever imagine. With the season on the line, both center fielders have pulled off a backflip catch. You cannot make that up. Jesse, one point separating these guys, one game separating them. What is your prediction for our last three innings? I'm going to mix it up right now. It is going to come down to the last inning here. And Bananas walk it off, dog pile here in Syracuse. Oh, that is quite a prediction. Jesse Cole, thank you so much. As always, my dear friend. I love you, Pico. Thanks, guys. Love you too, Jesse. That is always so special to get Jesse involved in, in his unique perspective on the broadcast. Like I said, to kick off the interview, he's the reason why we are here and getting to see over 11,000 strong here in the AAA home of the New York Mets affiliate, the aptly named Syracuse Mets. Boy, this is a beautiful evening and building for Banana Ball as we head to the seventh, which means it is time to give away a pair of hokas. Click the link in the comment section on the YouTube broadcast in the K Club comment section, also in the description on YouTube. Fill out all your contact information and where it says buzzword, you want to write orange. Orange is, of course, 
We are in the home of my beloved Syracuse Orange. Sam Claycamp, the donut hitter, could gift my Central New Yorkers here free donuts if he strikes out. So far tonight, a two-run double and a pop out to first. But this is a situation where the Bananas are going to their key guys out of the bullpen. And Matt Malatesta, the first man up on an 0-2 count, will have Slam and Sammy line this one out to right field. And that's the first out. And Malatesta, again, has been phenomenal for these Bananas since the month of May. The party animals come into tonight batting just 215 against the righty. And Malatesta, six of his last seven outings against the party animals have been hitless. The splitter specialist in his second year as a pro, third year as a banana. Came in to Banana Land with two weeks left in the 2021 Coastal Plain League campaign. Infamously, through three shutout innings of relief in the decisive game three of the 2021 Coastal Plain League championship against the Moorhead City Marlins. In relief of our darling who has left us in the booth, Cowboy Kyle Lewis. Justin Baber toying with possible extra bases down the left field line. It was barely foul. He also was flirting with extra bases his last time, lined a single to left center, tried to make it two, but was gunned down on a superb throw from Michael D. And I feel like you're likely not going to see that again for Dustin Baber or his party animals teammates as they're kind of in that same strategy as the ban Bananas had been when their bats were struggling. Just get your guys on base right now and trust the rest of that lineup. Right of Brant Beach, New Jersey on the bump. Fires the one, two, it is fouled off once again. A mile high, gonna be a very tough play for the fans. And they come up empty in the second deck. Still life for Dustin Baber, who is the only banana baller to ever foul out to a fan to end a game. It was over two months ago in Kannapolis, North Carolina. Now, as Jesse said, we're down to our final 12 innings of banana ball, counting tonight and Saturday afternoon in Cooperstown as Bill Leroy racing back. Phenomenal catch right on the edge of the netting. He snags the ball and slams into the wall. Just an excellent reaction time from Bill Leroy, instinctively knowing that that one might have the ability to stay in play. And Bill, going up against the netting, is able to come down with a little bit of a basket catch and record that second out for the Bananas. Able to withstand the impact of that wall behind the dish. Slap a star next to that in your scorebook at home. Now to the 10 hole we go. Chase Acuff has grounded out to third and flew out into the 9-4 two-person trick play. He can't be held off the bags for long though. Single back up the shoot. And he's aboard with two down as Party Animals lineup turns on its head and Reese Hampton still sitting at 98 hits on the tour to pace all hitters by a long shot. 0 for 3 with a couple ground outs and a line out to right. And you know, Tyler Gillum and Adam Byron likely put Malatesta into this game, hoping that he would be able to get the party animals three up, three down. But if any batters were going to be able to reach, it is Matt Malatesta who is Ben Reese Hampton's Achilles heel. Hampton batting just 235 against Malatesta, and that batting average will dip a little lower as Malatesta gets out of this inning in three minutes and 57 seconds does what he does so well. Keeps the party animals off the board. Franz Acuff at first. Michael Deeb waving to the good folks here at the crossroads of the Excelsior State. And the banana band blasting away as we head to the bottom of the seventh inning. Party animals trail by a point. Trying to keep the deficit at just three to two as they will send Drew Gillespie Pride of Albuquerque, New Mexico, back out on the bump. Another reminder that our next and final broadcast of the season will be Saturday at Doubleday Field in Cooperstown, New York, a couple blocks from the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum, where we will have a banana ball 
display being installed. Big ribbon cutting tomorrow in Cooperstown. That will be incredibly special. Special. And then we get to finish it off with our final game of banana ball in what some would call the birthplace of baseball, although that is hotly contested. It's a, nonetheless, I mean, it is a dream ending to a 2023 World Tour, if you ask me. I am absolutely fired up in Double Day Field, a pretty beautiful park, to tell you the truth. Big retweet to all of that. 1-0 count here on Bill Leroy. Just like for the party animals in the top of the seventh, the bottom half has the bottom three in the bananas order. Leroy Cox and Bridges all due to swing it. Bill has reached on in E4. And also flown out into the back flipping catch by Reese Hampton in center. 2-2 Two -two count on the bananas catcher. That one tapped to short, Acuff on a couple hops across the diamond. Not fooling around at all with their season on the line and still only six offensive outs to play with for the party animals. Yeah, we're at the point in this ball game where you would love to see a trick play on a ball like that, hit kind of slowly to chase a cuff, but at the same time, you can't take any chances being down a point in this ball game and letting a guy reach on a trick play missed and then possibly coming around to score a point when you were not able to score in the top half of the inning. Now Ryan Cox in the nine hole. It's in each of his two at-bats tonight. Came around to score a run. Also had Malachi Mitchell come around to score a run after pinch running for him. Coxie also been a man in the fifth inning. That tied the frame up. Before Dan Oberst ended it for his second walk off of the ball game. And it's good to see Ryan Cox back with a multi-hit game for the Bananas. Had been swinging it a little slow here in September. Just 125 entering tonight. And he'll chop this one here. Again, it is Chase Acuff charging that ball, making a nice throw a little bit off balance, and nailing Ryan Cox for the second out of the inning. Tyler Gillum. World's tallest hitter, Dakota Stilts. Oh, Britain! The third year banana gets a huge pinch hit opportunity after a couple ground outs to short to begin the bottom of the seven. He's gone a little cold as of late. Seven for 24 on the tour, hitting 292. And the fans have caught the second Dakota Albritton foul ball of the tour for an out. They did it in Staten Island, and now they do it here in Central New York. That was an unbelievable catch by the youngster with the glove. He was surprised that he came up with it, but the dad giving him a hug, that is a special moment here in Banana Land. Wow! The Ellaville, Georgia native will be happy to escape the Empire State. Staten Island and now Syracuse, the only two batches of fans who have retired him on foul balls. It's a one, two, three frame for Gillespie. And we go to the eighth, but before that, time for a blindfolded pillow fight. Young professor, you've got the wheels. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fight! There they go. They're swinging hard. Oh, bigger contact. Adam with the head shot. Our cameramen are in the way. <laughs> Careful, fellas. Who is the most fierce fighter among them? Swing hard. Swing as hard as you can. <laughs> it is absolute chaos in Banana Land. They are swinging for the fences. Five more seconds in this epic battle. Five, four, three, two. One, gentlemen, life holds off. All right, how did we feel about Neil? How did we feel about Adam? What about Dan? And how about Pat? Ladies and gentlemen, here is your winner, it's Pat! Well, from the bottom of our heart here in the booth, we congratulate Pat on the blindfolded pillow fight victory. Now you look 
Uh, the best pitcher on the tour, although the statistics, as far as ERA plus goes, will tell you it is Drew Gillespie. And double the sample size, Danny Hosley is right there with him. And the numbers, no matter which ones you are looking at, are all astronomical. He comes in to face two, three, and four. Dalton Cornett gives it a ride out to right center. It is off the base of the wall. Cornett digging for three. And the throw goes all the way there on a hop. He is in there and fired up as he should be. The pride of Pippa Passis has only his second triple of the tour. That was a big swing from Dalton Cornett, and he ambushes the first pitch from Danny Hosley, driving it out to right center. And you would have thought possibly it's Hosley pitching a little more carefully to DC3, considering Cornett has hit two of the three home runs off of Danny Hosley this season. And he's just 90 feet away from scoring. Can Hosley find a way to work some magic and get out of this tricky situation? Nobody has been better at Picking up strikeouts than Hosley. This one tapped back to Danny. It goes past him. It's going to be an infield single for Tanner Thomas. Can't be handled by Dalton Malden, who replaces Hosley at second base. And with eight minutes left on our two-hour timer, the young professor letting everybody know that if the timer runs out here in the eighth inning, it will be the final frame. And every run will therefore count as a point. That is certainly in play. Any banana ball half inning, less than four minutes, is pretty darn quick. And now Jake Skull hacking and fouling back a first pitch fastball from Hosley. And now Danny Hosley's ahead in the count, 0-1, and Jake Skull, who has really struggled to hit breaking balls, especially since the month of August. If I'm Hosley here, I'm trying to throw him the changeup or possibly the 12-6 curve and get some chases from Skull. That ball laced straight to Noah Bridges. Cornette tagging the throw from Noah. It's beautiful, but offline just a tad. Tanner will scoot on up to second as Cornette scores a run that could tie this game at three points apiece. Of course, Drew Gillespie is going to have to keep the bananas off the board in the bottom of the eighth, or the party animals can add to their tally here and get a little breathing room. The other way that run turns into a point is if our timer, which is now below seven minutes, runs out here during the eighth and it becomes our final frame. A lot of ways to skin this cat. Grayson Bloomer fouls that one out of the stadium, uncatchable by fans. He has a pair of one base sprints, a pair of RBIs, and a run scored. Only time he put a ball in play, he was robbed of a hit on a great diving snag by Bridges. By the way, Jake Skoll gets his 55th RBI. He's now one behind the Boomer for the tour high. That one flared into left, a big stop sign for Mr. Tinder Thomas as Deeb hits the cut and party animals on the corners with one out and already one run in. Heck of an offensive approach from the meat of this party animals order against the best pitcher on the tour. And they're known for having pretty big bats and hitting for extra bases, but here you've seen for the most part shortened approaches after Dalton Cornett was able to reach with the triplets, just the party animals trying to get bat on ball and try and get them to fall in for hits. So far, they've had it happen. Great speed on both third and first in Thomas and Bloomer. Now Joe Lytle swings it. Big cut and miss, nasty 1-0 changeup after he missed with the fastball in his first offering. That one, driven out to center. It's gonna get another run in easily. DR back to grab it. Bloomer tagging from first. Throw is gonna come into second. Good job by Bryson to tap the brakes. Only thing that could have stopped the party animals from scoring a run there was Bryson being tagged out before Tanner could touch the plate. But what a job that two through six in the order for the party animals have done. A pair of sack flies, great situational hitting by Skoll and Lytle. And they now lead the eighth inning by two runs as we have less than five minutes left on the clock. And that continues to play a more serious role in the, in the strategy here. Loomer with 19 steals and 24 tries. Scamper's back to first. 
Lytle just picked up his 48th run batted in on the season to tie him with Jason Swan for fourth best on this Party Animals team. One at Swan's head, acrobatic play by Leroy to grab that ball. Goes with the changeup and misses in, and now three balls and a strike to the Party Animals extra hitter. Three one pitch, gets the zone. Hosley goes with the gas and the count is full. And that's a big pitch from Danny Hosley to avoid issuing the sprint to Jason Swan and prolonging this inning. If I'm here, I'm going right back to the fastball and that's what he does. It's Bridges drifting back in right field and coming up with the catch. And Danny Hosley gets out of the inning allowing just two runs and we will see what the Bananas can do rallying in the bottom half of the eight. Before that, Jesse Cole letting the good folks know here in attendance for the 116th banana ball game of all time, the 86th of 87 on our tour, that it is time to turn Syracuse yellow. We kill the lights here in NBT Bank Stadium. And we light up the sky. Look at over 11,000 strong, all becoming yellow here in the Knickerbocker State. Remind you of the stakes. The Bananas are one win away from taking the tour. The party animals are one win away from making it eight straight victories and turning Cooperstown at 1 p.m. Eastern this Saturday into a winner-take-all game for the season. Bananas lead three points to two, but the party animals lead the inning two runs to nothing. And it's looking like the timer will run out and turn those two runs into two points. Jesse Cole, it is just getting wilder and wilder, man. How does it make you feel about the good people of Banana Land? We love you so much, Banana Nation. Now let's go, Bananas! Well, they certainly have the right guys to try and do so. Top of the order for the Nanners. Meadows, Oberst, and Deeb all due to swing it against Drew Gillespie, who will be out there for his fourth inning of relief. Check that, third inning of relief, as we are only in the bottom of the eighth here. And I think the strategy from the rip in this inning as it continued to go on and on, a five minute and 51 second inning there from Danny Hosley, was the Bananas knew that now they are going to need to score a run here and try and knock this game in the points department. And the decision to bring in Gillespie to replace Helton just looks so much smarter here. As he came in to try and defend a two-run lead in the sixth inning, he did so. That got the Animals their second point of the night. And he blanked the Bananas with a one, two, three, seventh, couple ground outs and then the foul out to a fan. And now the Party Animals still have their best pitcher on the mound for the best three hitters for the Nanners. And our timer with about 10 seconds on it. So this will be our final inning of the night. And as soon as we see nothing but zeros on the clock, the party animals will lead four points to three. We're a little giddy to flip the score, so we did so ahead of time. It was inevitable. And just like that, Kooky Young Sport has given the party animals two points in the blink of an eye. And they lead for the second time tonight, first time since the second inning when they were up one zip. And from an offensive standpoint, from the Bananas here in our final inning, it is all about continuing to battle, much like you have all night, 
not press at the dish. And you are seeing DR Meadows working back from 0-2 to now a full count against Drew Gillespie. Everybody in the box for the Nanners here in the bottom of the eighth represents the tying run. And DR skies that one in the infield. Clay Camp throws away his cowboy hat. And the third year banana baller has out number one. The doctor is one for three on the night. Now Dan Oberst will try his luck after flying out to center his first time. He laced walk-off singles in the third and fifth inning to at first tie the game and then extend the Bananas' lead to three points to one. He's up to 22 walk-offs on the tour, tied for third overall. Well-placed heater there, and he's behind no balls and two strikes. Nasty bender! Gillespie in a groove, and he finds himself his second strikeout here in relief tonight. And I think that's where you saw Dan pressing at the plate a little bit for the Bananas. And really, he didn't stand a chance from the get-go. It was Drew Gillespie on the first pitch, mixing up the arm angles, getting that strike on Dan Oberst, who wanted to swing and held up there. And then Gillespie dicing him up with some good off-speed pitches. He goes first pitch change up here to Michael Deeb, who resides in the three hole. He is the last hope for the Nanners. He has three home runs here in his third season as a professional banana baller. Lasted a double out to right center his second time up. Was robbed of extra bases his last time. The leaping catch by Jake Skull at the left field wall. Another change up, it misses down. And Gillespie, one bad one away from bringing the winning run up to the plate. There it is. Deeb works the sprint, clutch as per usual. He's going to monitor the sprint defense. It's played well by the party animals, so he circles back to first base. Content with representing the game's tying run and immediately being pinch run for by his fellow third world tour man Malachi Mitchell. And that's the right decision by Michael Deeb. He was of course monitoring the sprint defense in the event that a ball was going to get away from one of the fielders and he could move up to second. But here you are just trying to get on base, be pinch run for, and now EJ swings at the first pitch. Malachi got a great jump on that. And he moves up to third base, runners on the corners with two outs for the Bananas. And Dakota McFadden is going to try and tie this ball game against Drew Gillespie. The former Mariners and Twins minor leaguer has his third hit in his past three at-bats, all of them singles. He's three for four on the night. He represents the game's winning run. Across the diamond from him, 90 feet from scoring, is the fastest man in banana ball. Flash the Kid represents the tying run. Drew Gillespie soaking it in, pumping the crowd up as he faces Dakota McFadden, whose 23 walk-offs are second most on the tour. He's had a couple big hits this season for the Bananas, but none would be bigger here. And really, turn the tides for Dakota McFadden, who is just one for 12 against Drew Gillespie this season. Heater gets the outside corner. Lytle now sets up in. It ends up away. Boy, it had plenty of plate and was right at the knees. The cross-up might be the reason why Vincent Chapman didn't give that a strike call, but that had plenty of the zone. It was almost one of those situations where the frame from Lytle might have also thrown off Vincent Chapman as DMAC hits a slow roller, but Baber will charge and make the out. The party animals have won eight straight ball games and tied the world tour with one game remaining in Cooperstown. You simply cannot make it up. The party animals earned this one in spades. They've done what the 2004 Red Sox done, and then they doubled it. Eight straight wins in eight straight elimination games. And they were down a point going into what turned into our final inning with the two-hour timer running out here in the eighth. The party animals cannot be denied. They will try to make it nine straight wins. 
Now we get to backpedal our way into the party plaza and see who we can find. Hello, everybody. Great to see a Yankees cap. It is so great to be back in the Excelsior State and seeing a lot of my fellow minded folks. Okay, now we are out on the plaza, a beautifully brisk, about 55 degrees in the Salt City here tonight. And now we set our eyes to the prowl of trying to find a banana or party animal. We'll be happy with whatever we can grab. We just want somebody who played in this ball game tonight who can give us an instant report on what that was like. Because, as we mentioned, we talked about it ad nauseum tonight. This is as close to a playoff atmosphere as the young sport of banana ball has ever gotten. Thank you. Sorry for running right into you. That's what happens when you walk backwards. Uh, it was a beautiful evening here on Thirsty Thursday in Syracuse. And now, as we have escaped the gates of NBT Bank and set our sights on hopefully a player which is absolutely nowhere to be found. That is why our coordinating producer, Chad Reese, has uh, disappeared and just dissolved into the world to try and find us some action. You get to feel the beautiful warmth of over 11,000 folks here in Syracuse. Look, and it was a great crowd tonight. I mean, you've got to consider the fans catching the foul ball of Dakota Stilts all Britain for an out. And the bananas and the party animals alike really feeding off the energy of the fans. And once again, you saw such a professional approach tonight from the party animals and why they are such a good team in general, being able to rally in the greatest moments, especially against Danny Hosley, who has held that team below the Mendoza line this season. They come up in the eighth, are able to get those two runs that come in and turn into two points and get them the win in this ball game. Yeah, clutches could be, and it's a fascinating managerial decision for the Bananas. You have Matt Malatesta, who came in there, was able to keep the party animals off the board in the top of the seventh. He's now going to be facing two, three, and four in the animals lineup if you leave him in, and he has dominated the first six in the lineup outside of Dalton Cornett, who Hosley, outside of the two home runs that DC3 has uh, poked out on him, has handled pretty well. So they end up going with Hosley, Cornett ends up with the incredible triple, and all of a sudden the party animals get two runs. How's it going? We have a very excited fan here. Yeah. Uh, what is your name? Beckett. Beckett. What was your favorite part of the banana ball game this evening? Probably getting the autographs from the ump. Oh, you got a Vincent Chapman autograph. Yeah, it was awesome. Nice. And you enjoyed your evening here in NBT Bank? Yeah, except for the loss. Except for the loss. Well, you can watch the final game of the tour on YouTube in Cooperstown at 1 p.m. Saturday. Whoever wins will be the winner of the tour. Does that excite you? That excites me a lot. Okay. Do you have any love for the party animals, or are you a banana man through and through? I'm a banana man through and through. Let's go bananas! Not just a banana man, but also a banana girl as well. Uh, thank you very much. Now, what is your name, my dear friend? Jagger Jarosh. Okay, and what was your favorite part of uh, this wild evening here in Syracuse? Uh, being with the boys. Being with the boys. Yeah, I couldn't have said that any better myself. I completely agree. Uh, thank you all so much. It was great getting to chat with you. Thanks for welcoming us into Syracuse. We got to go find a player. Have fun, guys. You'll be on YouTube. I have no idea where Jackson is. Good luck finding him. All right, we continue to head this way. And yeah, they are fired up. That warms the heart. Okay, uh, Chad Reese, our North Star and coordinating producer of Bananas TV, has said that we have a, a player or two out here. Okay, now I get a stop sign from behind the camera. That is exactly the man I was looking for. Are you kidding me? Sean Fluke, there is a good chance that you will be getting the ball on Saturday with the tour on the line. How fired up are you and all your guys with the come from behind victory tonight? There's a good chance. I'm getting the ball, and we're winning this thing, baby. Let's go. Come on. Fire it up. Fluky, what was the dynamic like in the dugout? You guys get down a couple points in the middle innings, but, boy, you bring in Drew Gillespie. He shoves for you guys on the mound, and then you get the offense, who was able to rally against Danny Hosley, arguably the best pitcher on the tour. Uh, the boys were down a little bit. We were 3-1. Everyone's getting a little pissed off, a little mad. But then we just said, don't give up, just keep rolling. We brought Drew in, and that guy is unbelievable, man. He is absolutely unbelievable. Hats off to him. Gave me a chance to go out and win it for the boys, and we're gonna do that, let's go. If I told you over two weeks ago, Sean, before Saturday night in Des Moines, well, that is very fun, uh, that the party animals would win eight straight games and have a chance to steal the tour in Cooperstown at the conclusion of it all, what would you have told me? Ah, uh, I got one thing to say. 
It's not a fluke, baby. Yeah, the boys are here. Let's go. We're fired up, baby. We're winning this thing. We're winning it. Sean, what do you chalk it up to? I mean, eight in a row is no small feat. I mean, what has been the magic reason the party animals have been able to go on this run? Man, just all vibing together, coming together. Once they gave us those extra games in Wisconsin, we knew we had a chance, and why not go ruin the party? Let's go. Sean Fluke, your second year as a party animal. You've gone from a 12-game world tour to 87. This will be your 69th ball game between the Bananas and Party Animals on Saturday. Best of luck in Cooperstown, buddy. I'm calling it now. CG, baby. Let's go. Sean Fluke calls what would be his third career complete game on Saturday in Cooperstown, New York. It'll be fascinating to see if he can make it happen. Okay, we are going to continue to try and make a trek this way as Chad Reese clears away. I'm sorry for our coordinating producer. Thank you for letting us through. Really appreciate it. Uh, I just uh, had a little moon landing with a fella back there. That's when butts touch each other, by the way. I learned that from Modern Family. Okay, and now we continue to push on through as Chad has a look in his eyes that he has found somebody that needs to be on this broadcast. It is anybody's guess who Chad has singled out here. Banana, party animal, umpire, man -nana. It could be anybody. Uh, Let's see, you know, I feel like we might go, you know, off the grain here. I could see a world where it's Vincent Chapman, perhaps. I mean, you get the guy who umpired this big ball game between the bananas and the party animals. And boy, once again, Biko, we just cannot understate the party animals' ability to rally and win these ball games, especially in the moments that truly matter. Well, while we wait for the mystery guest, Kara Wolfbauer, can you come on in, get right in the central? You were down on the field for a lot of this game. I would love to get your perspective on the vibes from both dugouts and how it all turned out. The energy, honestly, was flowing through both dugouts tonight. Like you said, when we're in cold weather, it really feels like we're playing some playoff baseball. I know Kyle LeWeeks was talking about that up in the booth. Honestly, felt a little more fire on the party animal side today. I think when you have a team that's coming back from such a deficit, it just, it fires you up, man. They're going to be a hard team to beat in this final game, but really excited to have this last one here in Cooperstown for who takes a season win. So eight straight wins now for the party animals. It is really an incredible flurry by them. You got to chat with Mike Vivasis as well as Tyler Gillum, the head coaches of both sides. They were both very positive. Of course, you were talking to Gillum when he was up by two points. Uh, do you have any prediction for what will go down on Cooperstown with the party animals on an eight game win streak and the Nanners still for the ninth straight game, one win away from taking the tour? Well, if I'm gonna speak in terms of Jesse Cole, I think it's gonna come down to the last inning every single time, but Honestly, it's really hard to say because Bananas, they bring in the biggest crowd. It's always Banana Nation here, so they're going to be really excited to have a lot of fans around them. But Party Animals, like I said, they're fired up. If you're down by that many games, Bananas only needed one more game to actually take the series. Now we're here down to the very final last straw. I think it's going to come down to the vibes of Cooperstown as well. I mean, they're visiting the Hall of Fame. It's going to be something very exciting. I wish I had an exact answer, but honestly, coming down to the last inning, shout out Jesse Cole. <laughs> yeah, that is a very professional response from you, Kara. Well, we will have you on the field in Cooperstown as we've invited over 7,000 of our best friends to uh, really circle up on the Baseball Hall of Fame and Doubleday Field and see how this tour will wrap up. Can't wait to see what you find out on the field in Cooperstown, Kara. Yes, I'm very excited. Thanks for having me out here with you guys. This, honestly, the energy in this ballpark tonight in Syracuse here. Your place you went to college, it was great tonight. I loved it. Yes. Uh, warms the heart to hear. Thank you very much. Kara, Chad once again has sniffed out a fascinating interview for us here in the party plaza. So we will continue to trudge on through and follow our lanky-haired leader here. Okay, that is perfect. Jared Donaldson, the starting pitcher for the Bananas tonight is right here. That is a sweet St. Louis Cardinals powder blue jersey. Yeah, really good stuff. We got a fist bump from this guy. That's an awesome jersey. We got a fist bump from you. Sweet baseballism bananas hat. And I will spin my way in here. Donnie, there were shades of game two of the Coastal Plain League Championship against the Wilson Tobbs last year. You looked like you had the fire in your eyes. What was it like being out there in the center of that spectacle? Man, anytime you can put on a bananas jersey and go out there in front of this great crowd, it's always a great time, a good show. Um, you know, we, we get after it out there and uh, love every minute of it. Donnie, obviously a disappointing end of this ball game, but you saw a lot of encouraging signs tonight considering the Bananas offense had been scuffling some of these past couple of games. What do you think are going to be the keys to getting that final victory in Cooperstown and winning this tour? I think continuing to uh, piece hits together, throwing up zeros, and uh, go out there and compete every pitch and uh, 
I think we'll have a good chance to win the ball game. Peach Belt Pitcher of the Year last year, runner-up for D2 Pitcher of the Year. You really put on a miraculous performance. Then you win a Coastal Plain League Championship with the Bananas, and now you have most likely pitched your final pitch in the 2023 Banana Ball World Tour. Can, can you kind of sum up what the journey has been like thus far, Donnie? If you would have told me last year in college I'd be doing this, I wouldn't have believed you. It's unreal, great experience. Love being able to come out here for these fans and put on a show day in and day out. Um, I thank God for all this, and uh, can't wait to do it again next year. Jared Donaldson, thank you so much, my dear friend. You're a superstar and can't wait to see you in the future out on the Banana Ball Diamond. Brother, it's a pleasure. There goes old Donnie Banana Ball, the splitter specialist. Great stuff, Donnie. He has to get back to the incredible fans all over the place. So we will clear out and try and grab. Oh, my gosh. This is a very exciting one. Vincent Chapman, the dancing home plate umpire, was in the middle of some fascinating calls this evening, and I'm so sorry. We will continue to trudge on and try and pull him away from the fans here. So Vincent, as he continues to sign autographs, uh, just umpired, carry the one, his 84th banana ball game of the tour, the vast majority of them behind the plate, and we'll see what we can do if yeah reggie's got us good thank you reggie liggins vincent chapman come on down buddy we need to grab you real quick for the post game show here on btv vincent you just umpired your 84th banana ball game of the year how wild has this journey been for you man i don't wouldn't say wild i think amazing it would be the word uh, I'm blessed to be a part of the Savannah Bananas in this organization. And when you come to a game, it's the most fun you'll ever have. Win, lose, or draw, it doesn't matter. These people leave with smiles on their faces. And I do too because I'm blessed to be here. I'm blessed to know you guys. Hey, this is friendships will last forever. One day you'll be taking care of me in a nursing home, Biko. Vince, the fans saw a playoff atmosphere here between the Bananas and Party Animals. I mean, the World Tour is still on the line. From your perspective, umpiring this game, did it feel intense to you? It was very intense. Every single call was very, very intense. There was a lot of close calls tonight. Um, I, I think I missed a couple for both sides. Hey, and it is what it is. That's baseball. And that's what's great about baseball is you still have human error. you got to play hard, but we got to do our job as well and get the calls right. Unfortunately, um, I think I missed a couple calls, but hey, that's part of baseball. If you want somebody perfect, you better look upstairs and ask Jesus to start umpiring the games, okay? Vincent, you have the hardest job in banana ball, and I would not want anybody behind the plate, especially for what you can do with your body. How cool was it getting to dance in front of over 11,000 of the best we have here in central New York? Man, it was so amazing. The, the crowd was so electric tonight. I felt the energy when I was shaking my butt. I felt like I had electric going through my body. It gave me an extra two twerks per second when I felt that energy from the crowd tonight. Vincent, we are about to embark on Cooperstown, the home of the Baseball Hall of Fame, and you are going to be the man behind the dish in the Banana Ball World Tour finale. How cool is that for you? It's surreal. It's unbelievable. I never imagined in my years of umpiring that I'd be on this stage and be performing as thousands and thousands of fans and also being with an organization that's going to be in the Hall of Fame. We're going to be in the Hall of Fame. I touched the baseball that's going to be in the Hall of Fame. My DNA is going to be in the Hall of Fame. So if I'm ever wanted, don't look at that baseball for evidence, okay? Vincent, I can promise you every night I make about two times as many mistakes as you possibly could. Uh, we hold ourselves to a higher standard and stay locked and tapped in as Reginald Horton uh, would like us to do, and we hold ourselves accountable. You're a superstar. You're the best in the biz. Thanks so much for joining us and blessing us with your knowledge. Thanks for those kind words, Big I love you, and I'll tip you after the broadcast. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is why you lather up Vincent Chapman. Thank you so much, my dear friend. Get back to the fans, or else we will be in trouble. Okay. I'm going to try and knife through here. Thank you so much. I am sorry for dragging a cord through all of your lives here as we continue to arch around 
and look for our final guest of the evening. Yeah, that sounds perfect to me. There is nobody. Oh, you are completely good. No worries. I am in your world right now. Okay, uh, I will try and shimmy my way through here if my thighs will let me to get Jesse Cole here because it was a blast getting to talk to him. Yeah, if we can grab you, Jesse, we'd, we'd love it. Uh, it was a blast getting to talk to him during the game, but much has changed from then until now. The party animals came back. They won the game four points to three. Jesse, it seems absolutely surreal to say it. Eight straight wins for the animals. A very gritty victory for them tonight. And it all comes down to Cooperstown. You couldn't have scripted a better ending. This is exactly how we scripted it. Actually, if you went back in the off season, we spent months scripting it to get to this. And even me saying it's gonna be a walk off tonight. We got so close. Everyone thinks they're gonna walk it off. Didn't happen. Now it goes to Cooperstown, finishing with showdowns. Exactly how we wrote this up. Jesse, an 87 game world tour is not for the faint of heart. What things have you learned from a world tour of this magnitude? Where do you start? I mean, you look at what you learn from the game of banana ball starting. I mean, we learned so much. I mean, you think about how we, the changes we made from adding the challenges, from the showdowns, the adaptations we made. We're learning every single night out here. This is a giant experiment as we're inventing a sport, and every day we're learning. And the more we do, the more we learn. And now you think about 87 games going into this. We only played a handful. Now over 100 plus games. We're learning fast, and I can't wait to see what happens next year. Well, I asked you about the fans when we got to chat during the game, but then they caught a foul ball from Dakota stilts Albritton and also made only the third overturned call from a fan challenge in our young sports history. How about the good folks here in the Salt City? Yeah. Well, it's amazing. And, you know, that's what people say. As a fan, a lot of the fans know the game as well as anybody, and they are into it. And our fans know the game and they're learning banana ball every single day so they need to be involved and just now in the infancy of this sport wait till next year and the year after the year after as people really know this sport i'm going to want the fans and they're all going to be bringing their gloves they're going to be watching and be ready for a challenge it's going to be special we're just beginning Jesse, the bananas and the party animals are about to have an exhibit at the Baseball Hall of Fame unveiled tomorrow. What do you think about when you consider just the fact that the bananas are now enshrined, in a sense, in Cooperstown, a part of the history of the game of baseball? It's going to be an emotional night tomorrow. You know, thinking about all these players, when we started playing the game, we looked up to a lot of the heroes that are in the Hall of Fame. And I know we're not next to them with the plaques, but we're in the same place to see that. It's special. A lot of these guys, you never predict. Your goal is to maybe make the major leagues, but you never say, I'm going to be a Hall of Famer. And now we're a part of the Hall of Fame. It's really special. Fire me up, Jesse. That is what I'm talking about. That is what this guy does best. Mr. Cole, it all comes down to Cooperstown. I would be remiss if I didn't end with this. What is your prediction, my dear friend? I always say it's going to come down to the last inning, but it's coming down to showdowns tomorrow night. I love that. Okay, we'll see you in Cooperstown on Saturday. Thank you, guys. Awesome. There goes Jesse Cole. Yes, I love you, too. He didn't say it, but I could feel it. He meant it for you as well, Josh. Okay, uh, once again, we scream over the banana band as we get the man in the yellow tux, and that will play us out tonight. But before we bid you adieu until our final broadcast of the year on uh, 1 p.m. here on Saturday, that is when first pitch will come. Oh, Josh, you're a pro's pro. We have to give away a pair of hokas. We are not giving away two pair of hokas we're just giving away one pair of hokas yes correct and uh, good job with the energy there that's a that's a proper description yes. but hokas nonetheless no doubt drum roll josh <laughs> yeah! josh do the honors buddy and our winner tonight is megan jones you've got a pair of hokas Come on, Megan Jones. Thank you so much to everybody who watched the broadcast who took their shot at Hoka's. We will be giving away at least one pair. Hopefully, two pairs of Hoka's! And maybe even more than that on Saturday in Cooperstown. We'll see what we can shake our good friends over at Zappos down for. Before we close it out in my college town, got to shout out the incredible crew that made it happen. It starts way below us, 14 hours south of us to be exact, in Savannah, Georgia, in the control room, our technical and director, director, two directors, one job, Griffin Ellis, the best in the biz, on the scorebook, Kwanzi, one name, you know him, you love him, on the old Audi, Audi, oh, that would be, it would be Katie Duke on the replay, Keegan 
Woods. You see it once, you see it twice, you might just see it thrice. Thanks to the Keekster on graphics, Julia Massey. On the statistics being updated on said graphics, it is Mikey O'Connor. They are the best graphics team on this side of the Mississippi. We come here to the Salt City, and on the first base camera, you get Danielle Monk. Across the diamond from Danielle, it was Emerson Elmgren, the iron horse of BTV. On high first, Henry Campbell, the best in the biz. On high home, Clayton Franklin. You can say the same thing about that son of a gun. On the wireless, Nick Keldy for most of the night. Our associate producer, Chris Haynes, has taken it over for the post game fun and Chris always all over the place wherever you could possibly put a guy when it comes to the fan cam it was dominated by Max Gifford shout out the SI Newhouse School of Public Communications where we found Max and Danielle and shout out to our moderators in the chat Colbite underscore as well as Scott Thompson thank you to our video legend Chris Sachi another Newhouse man come on orange man all over the place and our YouTube King Zach bro our big boy from the Bayou the Hoka is being given out tonight thanks to our Zappos and K-Club Queen Melissa Beal, also known as Melly B. Some people even call her Melisant Beans Supreme. Thank you so much to Anthony Chianchetta from the Syracuse Mets who helped us put this entire show on, as well as Chad Reese, the coordinating producer of BTV, the straw that stirs the drink of Bananas Television and the wizard to all of our ways. Josh Trelevsky, excellent work on the color commentary, buddy. Pico Scala, you hit it pretty darn well, buddy, but I know they called you the splendid Scala of Syracuse back in the day. You proved it tonight. Yeah, that is a fact. That's actually exactly what they called me when I was on the Syracuse club baseball team. It's the only team we have, so it's really just Syracuse baseball. You don't even have to mention the club. Thank you to Carol Wolf Bauer for some incredible reports from the field and on the party plaza. Thank you to Kyle Lewix for joining us in the booth, as well as Tyler Gillum and Mike Vivasis for joining Kara and Jesse Cole for slapping a mic on them. I am Biko Scala saying thank you to our executive producers of BTV, Jared Orton, Jesse Emily, and Carrie Cole. We will We'll see you on Saturday in Cooperstown for the final game of the tour, the 69th of the season between the Bananas and Party Animals. The winner wins it all. Be there or be square. 12.30 p.m. pregame show. If we don't see you there, we'll see you later.